making the short journey from Jersey, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, led by the Big East top receiver, Muhammad Sadu, in perhaps his final college game. They'll battle the giant killing Cyclones of Iowa State who've overachieved to get bowl eligible. The team's first ever meeting here. It's Big 12 versus Big East on a balmy day here in the Bronx. ESPN's coverage of Capital One Bowl Week continues with the 2011 New Era Pinstripe Bowl. The 8-4 Rutgers Scarlet Knights against the 6-6 six six Iowa State Cyclones from the home of the New York Yankees here in the South Bronx. And it's an unseasonably warm New Year's Eve Eve here in New York City. <laughs> Temperatures in the 50s as a couple of transplanted New Yorkers welcome you. Chris Fowler and Jesse Palmer. Tom Rinaldi will join us from the field here. These teams have never met. We hope the excitement and the suspense of bowl week will continue because it's rated a toss-up game, Jesse. Yeah. But it was the huge upset pulled by the Cyclones over Oklahoma State that really reshaped the championship chase and got them eligible for this bowl game. And Iowa State is 6-6 six and six right now, but that record is not indicative of how great of a year it has been for Paul Rhodes and his football team. Here's a team that was only supposed to win two games this year. They've easily exceeded those expectations, and the high watermark came with that double overtime victory against then number two Oklahoma State, really captured the attention of the entire country. Paul Rhodes' team is tough. They are physical. This is really their type of game playing Rutgers here today at Yankee Stadium. Rhodes, an emotional guy. That huge upset. Engineered by Jared Barnett, we'll see the exciting dual threat quarterback. For Rutgers, Chase Dodd, the sophomore just announced, will get the start, but he'll try to get the ball to number six, Mohamed Sanu, frequently. Mohamed Sanu is the most valuable player for this Rutgers football team. He is the total package at wide receiver with his ability to run routes, strong hands catching the football, ability to run with the football after the catch. You're going to see Rutgers line him up all over the field, try and get him mismatched against smaller, weaker defensive backs. There is no mystery for Iowa State. They know Rutgers is going to try and four-speed Mohamed Sanu the football. Tremendous challenge for this Iowa State defense today. Try and contain Mohamed Sanu. Saw a shot of Greg Schiano, 11th year coach of Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights in a bowl for the sixth time in seven years. Missing last year. And the folks from Ames, Iowa have made the long journey. The folks from Jersey about 50 miles away from the birthplace of college football, the Rutgers campus. Scarlet Knights. Us, yeah, they, this is, I enjoy this. this. This booth is funky. We'll, we'll detail <laughs> how this field is laid out in Yankee Stadium. It was the late George Simoner that had the idea to configure this yeah. place so you could have football back in the Bronx. Goes back almost 80, 90 years. Football in various Yankee stadiums. So Justin Dorner. Kickoff taken by West at the eight yard line. The tiny but speedy returner bumps into a blocker. Now tries to get the corner. West knocked down at the 30-yard line. And that's where Jared Barnett, the freshman quarterback, takes over. He's extremely athletic. And he's a guy, really, that took over the starting quarterback position midway through the year in relief of Steel Jance against Texas A&M. He's a guy that can run the football. That's going to be critical today. This Rutgers defense loves to bring pressure. So Barnett's going to have to make plays throwing the football, understanding where his answers are against the pressure. But he's got to make plays with his legs as well. Make Rutgers pay for blitzing him. Barnett three and two as a starter, including the big win over the Cowboys and also the win over Texas Tech. This is James White finding a crease up the middle. And White into Rutgers territory as the Cyclones have become a good running team with frenetic quarterback explode on the first play. Iowa State's biggest advantage on offense in this game is up front on the offensive line. They dwarf Rutgers' defensive line. Right there, you saw a lot of push at the point of attack. Now they go up tempo after the 23-yard gain. This is White again, and he bolts for about eight. Chiano says his defense is ready for this. They face a lot of spreads in the Big East, but we'll see. They call themselves a no-huddle defense because they have to play West Virginia, Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati. They're going to get tested today against Iowa State. This is Barnett keeping the ball. And showing the burst, he slips down 
after gaining first down yardage at the 28. A lot of misdirection with the zone read and the spread offense of Iowa State. Rutgers really struggled with that late in the year against UConn. Quarterbacks running the football. Jared Barnett, only a freshman, he's got the ability to hurt you with his legs. This is Barnett. Takes a shot over the middle. The receiver fell down. There was a collision. No flag. Tried to find Albert Gary. Barnett, just a 51% passer. A guy that really is trying to find his accuracy, trying to find his rhythm. Does not have a lot of velocity on his throws. Something that he's going to have to develop for him as he matures at the quarterback position. But he is the best option they have at quarterback for this style of offense. Makes good decisions, makes quick decisions. He's going to have to make those today against the Rutgers defense that will mix up their looks. You expect to also see the junior Steel Jans who began this season as the Cyclone starter before getting injured becoming ineffective on second and ten. They take a shot at the far sidelines and no chance to make a play. Well, the impact players will start with Kelechi Osemele, the big left tackle, and we'll bring in some Broadway <laughs> show titles. He is the Lion King at 347. <laughs> six foot six, almost 350 pounds. He will eclipse this defensive line. If he gets his hands on you, the show is over. The Seam Green, top tackler, Big East Defensive Player of the Year. We'll give him the stomp. And on third and long, the Scarlet Knights have donated five yards. Offside, 91 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Justin Francis, a senior, one of the many Floridians on this Rutgers roster. And our last impact player, another one of the Jersey boys, yeah. Steve Boharness. He's got a lot of speed. Greg Schiano believes he's an NFL talent playing the middle linebacker position. He's going to have to be great with his eyes against these zone read looks he'll see from Jared Barnett. Rutgers is a good third down defense, but they just made it a little easier on Barnett with the offsides penalty. They show pressure off the edge. And here it comes. Barnett dumps it off and had a man wide open. Josh Lentz had beaten the blitz and would have scored ball behind him. This is part of what makes watching Jared Barnett at times very frustrating yeah. because he makes the unbelievable throws and he misses the easy ones. It's the right read by Jared Barnett finding the shallow cross, crossing his face against the pressure. He just has to lay that football out in front of him. That might be a touchdown. Yeah, sometimes the execution of the passing game just not there when you watch the Cyclones on tape. So Zach Geyer will try to get three points out of it. Footing can be tricky this end of Yankee Stadium from 41 yards. He knocks it straight through. Not a particularly fast starting offense, but it was a quick strike drive for the Cyclones. They got it going with the running game. We saw them mix up the tempo in a lot of different ways. They went to super tempo early, the first four. Third and goal. Second annual New Era Pinstripe Bowl at Yankee Stadium. I'm Chris Cook, fourth generation CEO of New Era Cap. As a leading lifestyle brand for over 90 years, we've been honored to have our products worn by legendary athletes, the best artists, and some of the most interesting people in the world. Coming off last year's memorable bowl game, it's an honor to be back here today to cheer on Rutgers and Iowa State, two illustrious programs that share a passion and love for the game of football. On behalf of everyone at New Era, we wish you and your families a happy and healthy New Year. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Rutgers will take over down 3 0. And you see Chase Job, the junior out of Lyman, South Carolina. Greg Schiano keeping secret his plan at quarterback until just before game time. But he decides to go with Don over the true freshman, Gary Nova. Who we also expect to see this afternoon. Yeah, we're going to see both these quarterbacks and Chase Dodd getting the start. They feel he's a better game manager, takes better care of the football. He's going to have to be good against this Iowa State defense. They're going to mix up their coverages on that side of the football. Grant Mahoney to handle kickoff duties and because Jeremy Deering, the dangerous returner for the Scarlet Knights, is still battling an ankle problem. He's not back there. It's Logan Thomas alongside Jordan Thomas. And good coverage from Iowa State in poor field position for Dodd to begin. 
you mentioned it, Chris. We're going to see both quarterbacks for Rutgers in this football game today. Chase Dodd, tremendous competitor, only six feet tall, at times struggles to see downfield over a bigger offensive line when he's in the pocket. Going to have to do a good job with his eyes, anticipating throws, trying to find the windows here, particularly when throwing the football over the middle of the field. Juwan Jamison is the tailback. They fake it to him and got a first down throw. Flips it underneath. It's caught by the fullback and Michael Burton shoved down after a short game. Let's pick up our Broadway show themed impact players. You like the Broadway? No, I love it. You, 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 you and I, we're, we're yeah. both, uh, we're both goers. So there's got to be Spider-Man. We'll show you some of the circus <laughs> catches that he has made. Tremendous hands. Unbelievable. An aptly named. A.J. Klein, rock of ages. we got a couple of guys. Co-Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Plays with tremendous instincts. Jake Knott looks like him, runs like him, plays like him. Man's the other side at linebacker. It's a great group in the second level at Iowa State. This is Jamison. And a Rutgers offensive line, Jesse, has had so much trouble this year opening holes. This is not the Ray Rice era, the banks of the rare 10. They've been very inconsistent running the football at Rutgers. And part of the problem, they haven't been able to find the right combination up front on the offensive line. They've made some position switches. Desmond Wynn normally playing left guard, starting at left tackle today. A freshman, Patim Bujari, going to play left guard, trying to get bigger so they can be more physical against what can be a very stout Iowa State D-line. They need four yards on this third down. Don takes a shot downfield, loops it up and over the head of Karan Pratt, who takes a shot in the secondary from Darrell Givens. Three and out. It is a very active secondary from Iowa State. When they see the football up in the air, they go and attack. They're not afraid to be physical. You see here on this play, Darrell Givens, once the ball let go, lowers the boom. So there's no opportunity for that catch and an impressive three and out for Iowa State's defense to start this game. Tough but small. Rutgers Brain Trust believes they can exploit some mismatches with their tall, speedy receivers against the short DBs of the Cyclones, but not in the first series. Aaron Horn is back to receive the punt. Justin Dorner takes it inside his 30. And he can't make the first man miss. So Iowa State back on offense after the 50-yard punt up three. ESPN College Football, the New Era Pinstripe Bowl, is brought to you by New Era. Fly your own flag. Visit us at neweracap.com. The GMC Sierra, now during the GMC holiday event, trade up to the best. Well, back at playing, quick start, and then a quick strike on the right side as Jarvis West collects the Barnett pass. They gained 41 yards, Jesse, in their first three plays, which were all runs, and then three incompletions from Barnett stalled the drive. Second and short, they'll, they'll love this. This is right in their wheelhouse here. Entire playbook open for offensive coordinator Tom Herman. Barnett on the zone read. Keeper, once again, he shows that burst, and there's room right up the gut. You know, Rutgers defense is very active, especially up front in the defensive line. They do a lot of stunts and twists in games, and they have to because they're so small. Only 266 pounds across the board. They give up on average 50 pounds per player to this mammoth Iowa State offensive line. They have to be active and move around. The problem is if they get caught, then they get taken for a ride, and you saw that on that last zone replay. Cornette collects the low snap, takes a shot over the middle. This time delivers an accurate strike to Lentz, who collects it in traffic and gets the first down. When you can run the football effectively in a game early, you can open up big windows, particularly over the middle of the field. You see that play fake just freezes all three Rutgers linebackers just for a moment, opens up the window for Barnett. Back and playing, and White dragged down. You know, Shiano last night, Jesse, had a feeling his defense might not be ready to play their best game. They come off their worst game against yeah. Connecticut when the Huskies just worked them over and they went there with a chance to get a piece of the Big East title and got thumped. And it's not the type of offense today you want to see, one that can be so multiple like this Iowa State attack. White has it again, and this time a short gain as a flag comes down. Bo Harness made the stop. Conference USA crew, this is Randy Smith. 
94 on the defense. Five-yard penalty, second down. It's the second offside penalty, and Rhodes will take that. And Chris, we're watching the tempo right now, how fast Iowa State can play. I mean, getting lined up, this is a group that had 101 plays against Oklahoma State. Granted, that game went into double overtime, but Greg Schiano told us when they were watching the game tape, sometimes the camera's not even ready. That's how fast they're playing. Second and short to the five-yarder. And it's a fake. Ball batted away west. Tried to get the ball back to Barnett. It was open, but the little guy's pass batted down by Logan Ryan. That is a tremendous play by Logan Ryan, who potentially saves a touchdown. Trying the old reverse throwback to the quarterback. Jarvis West, the guy, they like to get involved in the running game, but he's only five foot seven. And I think the lack of height affected his ability to get that over top of the defender. This is Jeff Woody dropped for a loss. And now it's fourth down, so a big stop from Scott Ballone, who had given the Cyclones five yards with a penalty, makes a big play. Rutgers defense has the ability to bow up when their backs are on the wall. They've given up some explosive plays in this game so far on the ground and through the air, but when they got him inside this fringe area around the 30-yard yep. line, they've been able to force field goal attempts. Bend but don't break. Less than half of opponents' trips inside the red zone have resulted in touchdowns. That's an excellent percentage. Here comes Zach Geyer. And this is a long one, 49 yards by six yards, his long for the season. It's a fake. And the holder dives for a first down. Did just get across the mark. Red Buecher took it, did not hesitate. Rutgers isn't so sure. They just needed to make the 29 for the first down. One, of the, one of the reasons these Iowa State players love playing for Paul Rhodes, he's willing to take risks. We saw it late in the game against Kansas State, fake punt on a drive when the game was tied here. Direct snap to Brett Buecher, gets up physically forward early in this game, trying to create momentum. When you do something like this, it sends a message to your team. So much confidence, they do in fact convert it. And you can see how this sidelines responded. Players high-fiving, jumping up and down. Didn't get a great spot, but still got enough. And Rutgers, which has been excellent on special teams this season, blocking all kinds of kicks, not quite ready for the fake. So now, Barnett with the high-tempo offense back to work. This is Woody, the rugged 235-pounder who scored that winning touchdown in double overtime against Oklahoma State when they wore down the Pokes defense. And Chris, interesting strategy from Greg Schiano and this Rutgers defense so far. We know they like to blitz a lot. They normally average 50% pressures on first and second down, not coming after Barnett early in this game. They're having a hard time getting lined up. <laughs> yeah, they are. That tempo puts so one much thing to simulate in practice. Isn't it a lot different when you actually <laughs> no face doubt. an offense that does it every week? No doubt. Barnett looks immediately right, but delivers one of those inaccurate passes that have plagued him. Oftentimes, for a freshman quarterback, timing and anticipation are two skills throwing the football that need to be developed. And it looks right now like Jared Barnett is pressing just a little bit. He's playing almost too fast. He's got time in the pocket to hitch, allow that football to come out on time. That's another easy completion he's missed. Barnett just two of five. He needs six yards on this third down. James White set to his right. Barnett cannot escape. And Rutgers once again comes up with the big stop. It was Brandon Jones off the corner getting the sound. Yeah, this time, Greg Schiano able to dial up pressure coming from the outside here at the bottom of the screen. And Iowa State does a good job initially picking it up. And you see a much smaller running back, James White, only 180 pounds, not able to be stiff enough at the point of attack. Pocket collapses, and yet they force another field goal. Yeah, this field goal attempt parent field goal attempt to come from 46 <laughs> right. yards so they gained three yards this would still be again a, a long for Geyer who's made 10 of 13. That's the snap down the boot away and Zach Geyer is two for two two promising drives for the Cyclones fizzle but they end up with another field goal The Austin in college football, the New Era Pinstripe Bowl, is brought to you by New Era 
Fly your own flag. Visit us at NewEraCap.com. The GMC Sierra. Now during the GMC Holiday Event, trade up to the best Sierra ever and get some of the best offers of the year. And Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy. Rutgers played NYU in a series here in the 20s and 30s. Jesse, three bucks. Pretty expensive ticket for that era, I gotta believe. Cost of living has always been high in New York City, Chris. We both know that. Tell me about it. <laughs> This is just a gorgeous day for December 30th. There have been a lot of postseason baseball games over the years played in a lot tougher conditions than this football game. This is, we're in mid-October right now. This is unbelievable. Mahoney to kick it away. Cyclones had excellent coverage on the first kickoff. This is Jordan Thomas. And once again, fighting to get near the 20-yard line as we throw it down to Tom Rinaldi on the field. Tom? Chris, thanks very much. On the field being the operative phrase because of the concern regarding how this field would hold up. You recall seven weeks ago, Rutgers took on Army here, and the conditions were far from ideal. As you take a look, a lot of turf has already come up. The players tried to plant and pivot. From the 50 to the 20 has been the majority of the time where the field has really been chewed up, and that's where Iowa State's been working. We'll have to really take a look at how this holds up as the game continues, Chris. Good point, Tom, especially where the Scarlet Knights are now operating on offense. Yeah. They're trying to move out of the infield area, which was dirt when they played the first time. But is, is they've tried to improve it. I think it is yeah. better than the October. I, I do, too. And they made the conscious effort, you're right, to bring in a thicker, heavier grass coming in from Long Island. They put it on the base paths around the mound, the pitching mound, and the circle by the, uh, the plate. But you know, we walked on it before the game. You and I both thought it looked pretty good. This is Jamison again. He's got the corner. Jawan Jamison motoring for a first down. Tries to cut back, reverses field, and he's finally whacked by A.J. Klein. A pair of great linebackers we talked about. Klein and not two small town Midwestern guys enjoying their first visit to the city this week. <laughs> well, you know, another issue that Rutgers has had running the football this year has been very young running backs. And Jawan Jamison, only a freshman. Trying, he needs cumulative reps. He needs to get better with his steps and his footwork right there, timing it out perfectly with the blocking scheme up front, pulling linemen, able to set the edge because he has that speed. Good news being able to run the football early. Initial first down for the Scarlet Knights, and here's a first down throw to Sinu. He's got so many balls just like this all the season long. That's why he's got 109 catches. Mohamed Sanu is going to line up all over the field. They, that may be one of the few times all game we see him stationary, playing out wide at the split end in an I formation, running a curl route. One of the best wide receivers in the entire nation. This Iowa State defense, this secondary in particular, got to keep their eye. They have to know where number six is lining up every single snap. He was the Wildcat quarterback last year. Carried the ball a bunch of times, took a real beating. He's been able to focus just on wide receiver this season, and it's really paid off for him. This is Karan Pratt, the sophomore. Short game. Well, and to your point, Chris, it's interesting to wonder how much further along Mohamed Sudu might be had he not played Wildcat last year and had to focus 59 carries a season ago. He could have just spent all that time in practice worrying about route running. And I think that time at Wildcat really beat him up as well. And I think it's something that Greg Shiano wonders just how much better he might be this year had they played in a pro style system like the one they're playing in now last season. Great route runner, great hands, strong. Not the fastest guy in the world, but we'll show you where Sanu projects. Move forward by Jamison, still fighting. He's got 14 yards, and that's good news for the Scarlet Knights if they can get this anemic running game going. That was a great play call by Frank Signetti for Rutgers here, timing it out perfectly. There's going to be a strong rush here off the bottom of the screen. You see Jacob Latimer coming in untouched, stays with the quarterback, and Rutgers able to gash him with the run inside. And Jawan Jamison, for a guy only five foot eight, under 200 pounds, running very tough, very low to the ground. Talking about an offense that averages less than 92 rushing yards per game. Dodd flips it to Jamison. Cyclones give chase, but cuts it up for about a four-yard gain. Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator for Rutgers, is going to try and keep Iowa State off balance with a lot of different play calls. He'll use shifts, formations. He'll use motions like you saw just there with the wide receiver coming in, try and freeze some people inside on defense. And then they're able to spit that toss out to Jamison outside. NFL background. In fact, this is the same offense that you'll see 
The Green Bay Packers yep. huge. I, I don't think that Don quite has the freedom that Aaron Rodgers has to <laughs> probably not. change plays within that offense. Doesn't really have the hardware needed to have that yet. No. There's the handoff again. And Martinet, the guy they call Jersey Joe, who'll get increased carries because apparently Jeremy Deering can't go. Jersey Joe for a game that gets popular with the crowd. They call him Jersey Joe. He's the New Jersey high school all-time yep. leading rusher. A guy fans love watching play. Had a big role in this offense a few years ago, getting a lot of carries. His role's been diminished this year. Spent a lot more time at the fullback position. Deering, who's got an injured ankle, tried to go in warm-ups, but just didn't have that burst. Cyclones fans on their feet on third and five. Bunch formation to the right. That's where Dodd looks and delivers in heavy traffic. Now it's a rule incomplete. Sanu was surrounded by three Cyclones, as you might expect, and Shaquez Washington helped A.J. Klein break it up. I think that's a throw that Chase Dodd would like to have back. Gets a little bit greedy. They have a bunch formation. You see right over the middle of the field, Paul Carrizola, the tight end, flashed open. It's one thing to want to get the football into the hands of your best playmaker, but when it's triple coverage, you've got to be able to come off of that. And I think that's a missed opportunity for Chase Dodd. So San Santi in his final game at Rutgers, the four-year kicker tries from distance here. This is about a 48-yarder. A and he pushed it. And the distance just wide, and Rhodes it's his defense to make a big stop. See the emotion, all the enthusiasm from Paul Rhodes, and it's genuine. Yep. Early in the game, it doesn't matter if it's a touchdown, interception, sack, 12-yard run. This guy gets excited, and his football team feeds off of that. He's become famous for those emotional post-game speeches in the locker room after the trademark big wins that Iowa State's become known for. They've knocked off Nebraska, Texas, and of course we talked about the big win at home over Oklahoma State. These are things that had not been done in the program's history. 0 56 and 2 against top six teams before that home finale this year. Two drives, two field goals so far for Iowa State as they take over on the 31. An option look here. Barnett pitches it out to White, who turns the corner. Could not quite stay in bounds. Bohorn has forced him out. Yeah. But another nice game. Yeah, Chris, going back to Paul Rhodes for a moment, he's really recreated, re-established the expectations here for Iowa State. This was a 2-10 and ten team on a 10-game losing streak before he took over just three seasons ago. And year one takes them to a bowl game. They beat Minnesota in the Insight Bowl. The following year beat Texas for the first time in school history. We know about all the great wins this season. Say White stepped out of the 35, so they spot it there, and Barnett keeps it. This time, Bo Harness is there to meet him, along with Logan Ryan. Paul Rhodes has really re-energized this program as well. You look at the attendance this year, six home games, at least 50,000 people in each game. First time that's ever happened in school history. There's a reason this guy was given a 10-year, $20 million contract. He's earned it. Maybe the best-kept secret coaching in college football right now. You're that high on him. Big, yeah. big on him. Big time. On third down, Woody is to the right of Barnett. Jared has time, takes a shot downfield, but well over the head of Darius Reynolds. The downfield accuracy just has not been there. Well, we just saw Chase Dodd force a throw in the previous series. On this one, Jared Barnett has nothing downfield. Rutgers decides to play a big zone coverage. He had his running back, Jeff Woody, on a check down throw five yards in front of his face. If he just takes that, it's a first down right now for Iowa State. Jared Barnett has got to find his group, get settled in here in this game. Just a 2 of 7 start. As the lefty punter, Kirby Vanderkamp. Boots it too short for Sanu to have a chance, and it just rolls dead, and the Scarlet Knights will take over at the 26. Capital One Bowl Week, and a full day of college football continues tonight on ESPN, 10 o'clock Eastern time. Iowa tries to win their fourth straight bowl, shorthanded without running back Marcus Coker against Oklahoma in the Insight Bowl. 
Big 12 representing well. It was the, the wild shootout in San Antonio won by Baylor that lifted the conference record to 3-0. and So the Cyclones trying to keep that going. And then later on, Oklahoma. You know, Oklahoma, you mentioned Marcus Coker not playing for Iowa. Of course, we know no Ryan Broyles, a wide receiver from Oklahoma. And Landry Jones, five interceptions in his last three games without him. Dodd straight back on first down. Fires complete. And this is Timothy Wright into Iowa State territory. So Signetti dials up a first down throw and they beat the 5-7 corner Jeremy Reeves. It's so important for a quarterback to be able to move in the pocket. Doesn't have to be anything drastic. We see Dodd here just slide to his left in the hitch and able to still throw on rhythm. That's coaching from Frank Signetti. You talked about him earlier. Three years having coached in the National Football League. He's a great quarterback mind and that coaching here rubbing off on his young quarterback Chase Dodd. 25 yard gain moves the ball into Iowa State territory. Another first down throw. He's got time looping the ball into double coverage, looking for Brandon Coleman, incomplete on the jump ball. Little greedy there. Trying to take advantage of a young freshman receiver in Brandon Coleman who's six foot six. And I think the idea here is jump ball. Let our guy go get it or nobody gets it. There, Coleman doing a nice job becoming the defender here, making sure this football not caught. Leonard Johnson, number 23, is 5'10", plays <laughs> bigger than that very good athlete. He's the corner that was placed opposite Justin Blackman and did a yeah. pretty good job shutting down the two-time Bolitnikoff Award winner that night. Empty backfield, five receivers on second and 10. Sanu has room. Tries to get the corner, lowers his shoulder, loses the football. Looks like the Scarlet Knights have gotten it back. A lucky break there as the ball came loose. It was knocked out there by Jake Knott. Mohamed Sanu has to be careful with ball security, and certainly being a physical wide receiver is one of his assets. Yards after the catch, his ability to get physical in the second level of the defense. Right here, the ball separated here from his body. Three points of pressure is what coaches will teach their players and preach to them, keeping it high and tight. Rutgers gets away with one there. The first down throw. Dot has time over the middle. Finds Sanu again. Stiff arm. Fights down to the 15. Because Rutgers has had success running the football early, Frank Signetti now able to call pass plays off of play action on first down. And Chase Dodd doing a nice job identifying where his open target is and getting the football out in rhythm and on time. Final 30 seconds of the first quarter. As the Scarlet Knights work toward the center field end of the football field. <laughs> Dodd's found a rhythm. I think they're going to have a lot more success throwing than running this afternoon. That's been the case really all season long. Jamison motions out, empty backfield, and it's Dodd on the rollout, flips it short, and the fullback, Burton, is cut down. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. Two drives with the Cyclones. They've built a six-point lead. Shiano sprints down for quarter two as the Knights are threatening. Greg Shiano's defense surrendering two field goals, making some big plays. When the Cyclones have penetrated inside their 30 now, Rutgers with their promising drive as we begin the second quarter, they're in the red zone. This is an area, Chris, where their offense has to prove its physicality. Generally, the best red zone offenses in college football are the ones that can run the football down in this area of the field. The passing windows, the passing lanes become constricted. We talked about that new combination up front on the offensive line for Rutgers. If they are going to maximize these possessions, turn them into touchdowns rather than field goals at some point, Chris, they have to be able to run the ball down here. Oh, on second and long, Signetti sends five receivers out empty backfield for Dodd. Quick drop, fires over the middle. Sanu again, his fourth catch. Cuts back, muscles down near the five before Klein to Foye stopped him near a first down. Mohamed Sanu's best route that he runs is the option route. And on this play, he has the ability to go left, right, or curl up. He's just reading the coverage, finding the soft spot in the zone. Chase Dodd doing a nice job locating Mohamed Sanu in the slot. Easy pitch and catch first down. On first and goal, we'll see if 
this Rutgers offensive line can do what you suggest. Overpower people. They've rarely done that this year. Mm. Power formation right now. Stutter step and met in the hole. Ryan Tufo'o is Jamison. In one. Tufo'o is a downhill player that is right at home playing at the middle linebacker spot. He's only five foot 11, and that's an advantage facing a smaller running back like Juwan Jamison. He can get low to the ground and kind of decipher, pick apart where those running backs are amongst all the trees in the offensive lineman. And right there, you see his physicality. Not afraid to put the face in the fan. He's from San Carlos, California. Ah, fade route, ends up battling for it. And that's a 6 6 receiver against 5 10 corner. It's the right idea by Chase Dodd. It's the wrong type of throw. You have to give your wide receiver a, a chance to make this catch. And throwing fade balls, you got to put it up at least over top of him or to his outside. This throw far too much inside. The 8 inch height advantage becomes nullified because of a poor throw. Now it's third down. See the lack of a, a Ray Rice back in a power running game definitely affecting the play calling for Signetti. Empty backfield again. Dodd hesitates. Dives near the goal line, takes a shot, doesn't get in. He was being chased from behind, and then he got met at the one yard line by Jake Nutt and Shaquez Washington. What do you do here on fourth down? I, you know, I think personally, I think you go for it, kind of send the message to your team. It looks like they're going to do that. Great some momentum. Greg Shiano. We saw Paul Rhodes take a gamble early. Greg Shiano doing that as well. Interesting here with the footing. This risk. Tenth play of this drive. They got the fullback Burton in. They'll shift around again to the right side. Sanu is the only wide player. And a timeout. You know, the play clock was down at two before Chase Dodd noticed it. So we'll talk about it and see if the Scarlet Knights still go for it after this. Fourth down for Rutgers and Jesse, you think that Chase Dodd got away with a false start before the timeout. There's a bit of a miscommunication. You see Chase Dodd here. He thinks he's getting the snap a little bit earlier. He's actually going to stutter and rock out from under center. You see all the Iowa State defenders pointing at him. That should have been called a false start. Rutgers should be kicking a field goal right now. Five yards back. Instead, they go for it. Jamison is the tailback, and he's got it. And he will have to fight, but he scores. Penetration by the Cyclones. But Chiano's gamble pays off as Jamison kind of squirms sideways and gets Fra in. Frank Signetti dials up an attitude run. This is a power play. They pull the backside guard to get a bigger body at the point of attack. Still, Iowa State was able to find penetration into the backfield from A.J. Klein, co-defensive player of the year in the Big 12 Conference. Tremendously strong running by Jawan Jamison. And the freshman from Stark, Florida scores his eighth touchdown of the season. San Santi gives Rutgers its first lead. So you see here the power play getting it back to him deep. And there's AJ Klein, normally very sure tackler, but it was the momentum of Jawan Jamison. You're going to see the pull coming from the backside. Here's Klein able to meet this play in the backfield. Tremendous instinct by Klein, able to fight his way through, but he's got to stone the running back, a much smaller running back in the backfield. I think the height advantage there, or I should say disadvantage by Jamison, being only 5'8", being so low to the ground, actually helped him. Wiggles his way into the end zone. has got impressive strength for 198 pounder. He's going to have to, again, be the workhorse today with Jeremy Deering nursing a gimpy ankle. And that's not a role that Jamison's had very often this year. No. It's really not, and I think for, again, a young running back, one that Greg Schiano is very excited about, but just needs more repetition with his footwork. You know, these bowl practices, getting these 15 extra days, it's so beneficial for so many young players throughout the country. And Juwan Jamison, a guy that's going to be relied on heavily next season and for year to come, uh, years to come in this Rutgers offense, having a tremendous start to this football game. The 74-yard 10-play drive covering... Four minutes, 23 seconds began with a bunch of first down throws by Don. 
finishes off with a fourth down touchdown run by Jamison. Short boot by Dorner is taken by Aaron Horn. The Cyclones will start across their 30 yard line. Time now for today's Aflac trivia question. Can you name the four Major League Baseball stadiums the Rutgers has played bowl games in? Huh. Rutgers fans have an advantage. If you can't <laughs> name the stadiums, at least name the major league teams who, who call those places home. This is the fourth time I can name baseball park. I can name one of them because I called one of those games, and the hint is it's not in the United States. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just giving, I'm how, giving people how? at home one. Just giving them one. How dumb do you think our audience is? <laughs> I can give you two, actually, because we're doing this game. So <laughs> I've actually I, technically right. called two of those. So the Cyclones behind for the first time this afternoon. Oh, nice showing pressure. Lots of pre-snap movement. And the read is to hand off to White, who plows forward for four before Bohornes knocks him down. Iowa State right now content on offense, trying to get back to running the football. And as you see, picking up the tempo again, going back to that super tempo, puts stress on Rutgers. Sometimes they'll do this, look to the sidelines, change the signal, which gives Rutgers a chance to get organized on defense. Trying to get Rutgers to show their hand so they have the best play call possible. It's another win and a tackle for loss in the backfield here by Kevin Snyder, the freshman linebacker who fills in for Jamal Morrell. Great play call by Greg Schiano on defense here, bringing pressure off the edge this time. It's the true freshman Kevin Snyder here at outside linebacker. Just going to come in, read the zone, read, attack, make a tackle. And even if Jared Barnett pulls that, there's another defender outside. Logan Ryan able to make that play. Good defense versus the zone read. So now it's third and seven. Neither team has converted a third down yet this afternoon. And a whistle flag before the snap. False start. 75 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. It's big Hayworth Hicks and that Rutgers pressure that show up the middle causing some confusion. Oh, some jitters, especially inside right now on this offensive line. And these are penalties that Iowa State cannot afford to have right now. Third and long, third in California. <laughs> not where you want to be with Jared Barnett. Only a freshman who has struggled at times this year throwing the football and, tonight, and today with his consistency. He's got three receivers bunched to the left on third and 12 now and he's sacked. Ball loose, a scramble for it, picked up. Scott Ballone dragged down at the five yard line and Barnett is slow to get up after the sack. First turnover of the game. You see Greg Schiano fired up and he should be on third downs in this game. Greg Schiano has decided to force Jared Barnett's hand with pressure, bringing extra players from the second level of the defense, forcing Jared Barnett to tuck the football, doing a poor job with ball security. As a quarterback, you have to understand when a play is dead. Right now, tuck the football away. It's ripped out. Kasim Green, the co-defensive player of the year in the Big East, got him low and knocked it loose. You see that Barnett's legs get twisted around, and then Vallone, who limped off the field, Thought he was going to score, got dragged down at the five. And now they'll review it. The Conference USA crew wants to take a look at this. What might be the subject of the review? I think they're going to determine whether or not his knee had touched the ground before he actually. New Barnett? Yeah, I think so, before he actually lost possession of this ball. Taking a look again, pressure coming inside. It's Ball ripped. comes out right there, ripped out. Does not look from this angle like he's even touching the ground. Any any lower part of his extremity on the ground. And it was Wayne Warren, number 27, who ripped the ball out of Barnett's hands. Doesn't appear to be down. I think that's a fumble. Yep. Very opportunistic play by this defense. Great fundamentals. This, the tackle is secured, and defenders start ripping the football out. Let me see Wayne Warren, who's the dime back. Showing the strength, getting the ball yeah. out before the backside Barnett hits the yeah, ground. That's a fumble. And Rutgers going to get possession of this football. It looks like they're going to get possession of this football inside the five yard line because of that. An opportunity here for a huge momentum shifting play. Carter Bukowski, the tackle, had a chance to grab the ball. 
to review. The rolling on the field stands. It's a fumble. First down. But those offensive linemen sometimes have trouble collecting the ball when it's rolling around. <laughs> Ballone had a chance at a scoop and score. You know, Nick Aliotti, the defensive coordinator at Oregon, calls them city fumbles and country fumbles. If there's a lot of bodies around, it's a city fumble. You just got to jump on it. If there's nobody around, that's a country fumble. Those are the ones you can scoop up and score with. Scott Ballone picking up the country fumble. Now looking at his ankle. And meanwhile, Dodd with Jamison behind him as a first and goal. Play action. Looking for the corner of the end zone. He threw it right into traffic. Arizona, the tight end, was well covered. <laughs> Greg Signetti opting for a pass off of play action, going for a quick strike after the turnover. I think the throw here is to the fullback here in the flats. Yeah, Burton was so open. Michael Burton. He and, chose, you know, he chose it, for the tougher it, option. It may he? have been a contested throw, but it, dangerous. Do not want to force the football again. You know, we, it, it's great to have confidence in your arm and your wide receivers, but a couple times now we've seen Dodd force throws into triple coverage. And it's tough as a play caller when you don't have that much confidence in your running game. On second down, Dodd looping it high for the end zone, but it's over the head of Sanu. A lot of creative play calling right now from Frank Sanu. This is the same concept as a fade throw, this time just working it inside the slot to Mohamed Sanu. He's open, had his defender beat. Just needed a better throw. This would be very disappointing for Rutgers if they're not able to capitalize on this turnover and come away with seven points. So it's a different kind of a Rutgers team. In years past, with the spread, it might have been Sanu and the Wildcat trying to run it in. I think spreading the field right now is the key right now. And Sanu in the slot here at the bottom of the screen. Martinek, the lone tailback, but it's Dodge straight back. Again, fires over the head and just kind of chucks it away, and they'll take three points. That's a disappointment. That is, especially coming out, throwing the football three times. You know, Chris, they've had some success at the point of attack, running the football, you question being that play dominant. Yeah, I do. I, you know, I think coming out early, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to run the football on first and second down. You just run it in for a touchdown here down on fourth down on the previous possession. But, you know, two incomplete passes, then a throwaway, come away with only three points is disappointing. T missed from 47. This from 21. The end of the field that caused him problems in the first game here at Yankee Stadium against Army. Poor footing led to a missed field goal and a missed PAT. Footing better this afternoon, as Tom Rinaldi mentioned, and that one straight through. So Rutgers gets just three after getting the ball first and goal following the fumble. ESPN College Football, the new era pinstripe bowl, is brought to you by. New Era. Fly your own flag. Visit us at NewEraCap.com. Taco Bell. Think outside the box. And Jaguar. See the new model year lineup at JaguarUSA.com. That was football back then, Jesse Palmer. New Yorkers of a certain age might remember <laughs> Chuck the Bader. history of NFL games here at Yankee Stadium. Chuck Bader, Hawaii Tittle. Some big time pictures there. Talk about a muddy field. These guys walked up there yeah, covered well, this, with soil. This footing is, is, <laughs> is immaculate compared to what some of these guys played on back in the day, no doubt. You know, playing on the New York Giants, I, I'd always kind of secretly wanted to play a game at Yankee yeah. Stadium with the polo grounds. You know, you've seen all these great pictures from back in the day. The Meadowlands is beautiful, and it's great. The new stadium's gorgeous, but this is such a great environment playing football games here at Yankee Stadium. Only seats about 46,000 for football, so I doubt they're going to give up the cash and move across <laughs> the river to this side. Jarvis West has the corner. Jarvis West cuts it inside. And the speedster, one man to beat. A flag is down upfield as West scores a marker way back at the 35 yard line. 93 yards for Jarvis West. We'll see if it stands. He's still celebrating. Down to the outfield end zone. Return holding, 21. He's coming back. 10 yard penalty, first down. And the Rutgers player is down as Rhodes kick off return as he raced. Marcus Cooper is the injured Rutgers player. A hold is what they call Jesse. You'll see it in the left side of the frame yeah, here. Yeah, you're going to see it here, right there, number 24. Basically, 25, it looks like. She basically tackles, or almost tries to tackle. The Rutgers player covering the kick and negates the run back for a touchdown. Yeah, Tyler Leo, one of the two number 25s on this Iowa State roster. 
Got his money's worth on the hold. <laughs> he did. But you can see the excitement that Jarvis West can bring. He, he provided a huge kickoff return, which helped shift momentum in that yeah. upset of the season against Oklahoma State yeah, when they were in deep trouble. Return. Got the ball back into Cowboys territory. We'll take a break. After the penalty, it'll be ball at the 26 for the Cyclones. Auburn Chick fil A ball. What about Zach Kolaris? Expected to get the start for Cincinnati. Breaking his ankle against West Virginia late in the year. Tremendous recovery as we see Steel Jantz now under center for Iowa State. He's the junior who began the year as the starter. He's the more effective thrower of the two quarterbacks, not the running threat that Barnett is. And rolling out immediately on cue is Steel Jantz taking <laughs> off. Yeah. He says, take that. Doesn't necessarily <laughs> have the same wheels, but he understands the philosophies and the principles and not afraid to call zone read with Jantz in the game. You know, I think. One reason you know, he lost his starting job was because of decision making through nine interceptions over the first six games of the season. That was most in the Big 12. Paved the way for Jared Barnett. Making a good decision there, deciding to pull the football in the zone read. It's Jans keeping it again. He wants to flash his running ability, and he's in the clear. Doesn't have breakaway <laughs> speed, but he's dragged down by Kasim Green after a long run. Maybe they took their eye off the quarterback as a running threat when Jance came in and they're paying the price. And he's reading the defensive end to see whether or not he crashes to the ball carrier. Both times that's happened these last two plays. Smart decisions by Jance. 225 pound quarterback showing you the wheels. Does not look like a young Jesse Palmer. <laughs> I can tell you that. That's way better. Like an than old I Jesse Palmer? <laughs> <laughs> looks a lot better. My point is, much better runner than I was or ever will be. First down throw for Jantz, almost intercepted. Green got a hand up and knocked it down. Well, Jantz was a guy who engineered the dramatic comeback over Iowa. They yeah. had to come back to beat Northern Iowa. They came back to beat UConn on the road. And Steel Jantz was one of the stories of September. But then he got injured, became less effective, and really got pulled against you know, Texas A&M. That's when Barnett emerged and, and provided the spark. It really it changed the complexion for the entire season. This team played differently when Jared Barnett took over against Texas A&M. But Jans has prepared well, and Paul Roach told me he's earned the spot. You know, at least to get a few series. This time he's dragged down for a loss as Logan Ryan is having a terrific first half penetrated. It's been really key for Rutgers today to win on first down. And by doing that, setting up second and long, making Iowa State more predictable. And second and third down have been the downs today that Greg Schiano has decided to dial up the pressure, move around, and get after these quarterbacks. Remember, they forced the fumble on the last possession on third down. Let's see if he brings pressure here. He's showing it now. Yeah, showing it up the middle. Ooh, they go to a bear look now. Center and guards, both all covered. Third and 15, a high delivery and a nice catch by Darius Reynolds, but he's far short of the first down. Jance had to get it out quickly. The very last second, this Rutgers defensive line shifted into what we call a bear front where they cover the center and both guards. It makes every offensive lineman have to block man to man. And Rutgers was able to sneak. Timeout. Iowa State. And fourth and nine. They'll chat about it. That's what makes Rutgers such a tough third down defense to deal with those schemes. Zach Geyer was good earlier, Jesse, from 45, which is a career long. This, if they kick it, will be about a 51-yard attempt. Rutgers very good at blocking field goals. Coming straight through the middle. They successfully completed a fake from long distance earlier this afternoon. High snap. And the timing was off from the start as Geyer hooks it. Greg Schiano fired up with good reason. That's a win for this Rutgers defense after giving up two long runs to Steel Jantz, able to bow up yet again when Iowa State able to get into the fringe territory near the 30-yard line. And you're right, Chris. Bad snap, high, and the holder was not allowed. To, it couldn't able to get the laces outside. It all results in a missed kick. Buker did a nice job getting the ball down, but you yeah. could just tell that the timing wasn't right. Schiano. Once again, able to get his defense to come up with a stop in their own territory. The true freshman Gary Nova has now checked in a quarterback. And hand it off on the end around. 
It's a first down carry. And Nova, we, we not we thought we'd see him. I mean, we, he, he played about half the year. He's actually been the slightly more productive of the two quarterbacks, but just a little more mistake prone. I think he has the more upside when it comes to all the physical traits, when you look at size, arm strength, accuracy, all of those things. But because he's a true freshman, oftentimes this year, Chris, he's just tried too hard. Tried to make every single play, forces a lot of throws. He's been a bit more turnover prone, but this is a guy this coaching staff very excited about for the future. Don Bosco Prep is a high school power in the state of New Jersey. He barely lost a game in his high school career. For the I formation, Martinick tries to cut it back, but he's thumped and he'll gain nothing. We talked about the improvement you can make, especially as a young quarterback with all those bowl practices. I think they were hoping that Nova might come out and really show that quantum leap. It's a time, yeah, chance he gets it's a time where the light can really go on for a young quarterback. It did with me. I played a bit as a true freshman for Steve Spurrier at Florida. I remember over 13 weeks of the regular season swimming in that playbook, and it wasn't until bowl practice you're actually afforded the opportunity to step back and conceptualize some of the things you're doing. I think Gary Nova feels like he's been able to do that, feels much more comfortable now in this offense. Swimming and sometimes drowning in the playbook, huh? There's a flip over the middle and a completion of the tight end, D.C. Jefferson, who has a first down after an 11-yard pickup. So the first clutch throw for the young guy. One of the most impressive things about Gary Nova is his ability to focus downfield regardless of what's happening around him. And Iowa State bringing pressure. There's bodies around him. Gets through to his second progression, the tight end, D.C. Jefferson. D.C. Jefferson, by the way, big-time high school quarterback, committed to LSU before coming here to Rutgers to play tight end. He handed it off to Jameson. He takes a shot and still drives forward for about nine. Yeah, Jefferson is 6'6", 258. Good blocker. That's a long journey from one time <laughs> LSU quarterback recruit the tight end and the just banks looks, of the rare. Just looks like Zach Mettenberger when you consider the size comparison right now between these two. But is Jefferson a guy that this coaching staff feels like can one day play on Sundays at the tight end position. This is obviously a new thing to him, learning how to block, getting a three-point stance, but on that previous catch, you see the raw athletic ability. Pop the fullback. Burton, who breaks the tackle, goes to the secondary. Michael Burton still running. Dives down inside the 25 before Shaquez Washington combined with Reeves. You very rarely see fullbacks get carries in football games anymore. In fact, Tom O'Brien, the head coach of NC State, has never allowed his fullback to carry the football throughout his entire collegiate career. Right here, Michael Burton showing you some of the wiggle. This is the guy that played tailback in high school, has the ability to make plays in the open field, and it's those quick-hitting plays that allow is, these guys to get into the fun. second level. He only had seven carries all season. It's all this space. 23-yard gain for the fullback. This is Martinick on a delay. And this is Rutgers now beginning to flex a bit. Where was this ground game when they had first and goal? In inconsistency all year long, Chris. When you consider this Rutgers team ran for over 200 yards against Cincinnati this year, yeah. who's statistically the sixth best run defense in the country, but never able to put good rushing performances in back-to-back -back weeks. But the shuffling up front on the offensive line, we're seeing running backs running in their tracks right now. They look very physical, and they're dominating right now at the point of attack. This is without, again, Jeremy Deering, who had been the feature back near the end of the season. Instead, Jamison has been the workload. Short gain there, and it's going to be third and three. And that's fine, even with these short gains on second down like that, when you can establish a bit of this running game, gain positive yardage on first and second down. Third and five, third and four, so much, much, uh, much more manageable. The entire playbook right now at Frank Signetti's disposable. This is really a good place to be, particularly with a true freshman under center right now. What do you call here, Coach, on third and five? Well, you trust the young quarterback? I'm looking for Mohamed Sanu right now, split yep. out le way to the left. You can expect potentially an in-breaking route, but if they're giving him, oh, they're bringing him the motion now, expect an option. Sanu in the slot. Nova looked that direction, now fires underneath, and it is Sanu with the first down catch at the 13-yard line. Leonard Johnson in tight coverage, but an accurate throw. There's another option route for Mohamed Sanu. Nice job by Signetti formating this, bringing him in the slot. He's just going to press up, nobody around him, so he immediately turns around, finds the soft spot in the zone. Gary Nova, only true freshman, but he's smart enough to understand, and he's experienced enough to understand where his best player is on the field. That's five catches for Sanu in those 59 yards. Jameson, 
not much there. AJ Klein and a bunch of red shirts swarming him. You know, these are two different looking defenses from a schematic standpoint. Paul Rhodes and Iowa State, Wally Burnham, their defensive coordinator, they play to their strengths and their personnel. They are not a pressure defense. They want to sit back, mix up all their coverages, allow linebackers like AJ Klein and Jake Knott flow to the football. They just don't have the personnel on the defensive side of the ball right now to be very active and blitz a lot. That's not their identity. That wasn't the same case when Paul Rhodes was a D coordinator at Pittsburgh for eight years. He was a blitzing maniac. Right, he was yeah. bringing guys from all over the joint. Not the case this year for Iowa State. And Burnham has not been traditionally a blitz heavy guy as a defensive coordinator. Jamison makes it to the secondary. Center steps into the end zone. Caleb Ruck, the center, with a nice block, and Shiano's team builds its lead as halftime approaches. Tremendous push. Explosion off the line of scrimmage again. This is a power attitude play downhill. Tight ends, fullbacks, pushing Iowa State defenders backwards into the second level. That's impressive. Second touchdown for Jamison, who's gained 61 yards here in the first half. Team makes it an 11 point lead. So Rutgers beginning to flex a bit here at Yankee Stadium. You feel good, Jesse, if you're Gary Nova, the true freshman quarterback who comes off the bench and engineers a touchdown drive, but good work by the guys up front. Especially if you're able to run the football, and that's exactly what they did right here. You're going to see Jake Knott, big time second team all Big 12 linebacker. The fullback's going to come out just stone him on this play that's Michael Burton who had the long run you remember earlier on the possession winning at the point of the attack the center up front Caleb Ruck does a nice job getting help on a double team turning his defender around Jamison going almost virtually untouched into the end zone well Chuck West Washington got jocked there as Jamison <laughs> just stutter stepped and went almost untouched into the end zone Chris fans enjoying the reemergence of the running game this is Aaron Horn Breaks free and drags tacklers across the 45 yard line, loses the ball. Rutgers says they have it. And fighting in the pile. And wow. it is Rutgers football. Wow. The second turnover for Iowa State, a team that was plagued by turnovers all season long. And now there's some confusion. I thought the signal came out pointing Rutgers' way. Apparently that's been changed and now they're rooting that the, the player was down before the fumble. Taking a look Let's at this again, look. yeah. Horn. Knee comes down, yeah, knees down right there, still has possession of the football on the ground, causes it. That's the right call. Should be Iowa State possession. Knee down there, still has the football before the ball's even touched the ground. That's the correct call. <laughs> Rutgers offense is on the field. The play is under further review. Yeah, the Rutgers offense was trying a quick <laughs> snap yeah, yeah. and no doubt. take advantage of the call, but you believe this will be reversed. Yeah, I think it will. Right now, if you're Greg Schiano, you got to get over with your special teams, particularly on the kickoff coverage unit, and have a little heart-to-heart. -heart. This is two consecutive kick returns that Iowa State has gassed you on. Remember earlier, it was Jarvis West that took one back to the house that got called back because of a holding call. So you take a look again at this play, Aaron Horn. He's the Big 12 That's Offensive Newcomer of the Year. Ruling on the field was confirmed. It was not a fumble. First down, Iowa State. Ruling on the field was confirmed. Hmm, okay, well, Rutgers' okay. offense was yeah. out there thinking <laughs> that it was a fumble. Well, you see Aaron Horn on this return, the value he's provided this football team. Big 12 Offensive Newcomer of the Year as a junior, playing a big role receiving as well as in the kick return game. And with that return, giving Iowa State the football back here, about midfield and another possession for steel Jans drove Iowa State down the field before the drive fizzled he's the better passer and with 215 to work with before halftime and Barnett struggling through the air you see Jans let it fly here no doubt near side not by Jarvis West, but he's dropped for a loss by Kasim Green as we check back with Reese Davis in the studio. Happy New Year, Reese. Happy New Year, Chris. Coming up on the H&R Block Halftime Report, we'll talk about the inspiration for the Oklahoma Sooners as OU gets set to wrap up its season in the Insight Bowl against Iowa tonight. And BYU had a big rally earlier today against Tulsa. Dr. Lewin Mayday are in the house. We'll see you in a bit.
Cyclones playing quickly and Josh Lenz collects the ball but fights back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten. Yeah, it's good to see Josh Lenz back out on the field. He's a guy that's been fighting through injuries, a calf injury, a knee injury. Really the most complete wide receiver for this Iowa State team. A guy they like to get lined up in the slot. He's a weapon that's going to have to play big today. Here we are again now. Third down and long. This is where Rutgers has dialed up the pressure early on this possession, bringing it from the field. Let's see if they do that again. It's been tough. The Cyclones 0 for 6 on third down, and they are bunching the pressure right over the garden center. Chance though has time and flips over the middle for a first down. Running free is Hammerschmidt, the big tight end, and he hammers down to the 31-yard line. Good call against the Blitz. Tremendous play call by Iowa State offensive coordinator Tom Herman. Going to use a delayed route where Hammerschmidt in a three-point stance didn't get out on the route until all the pressure had crossed his face. 22-yard gain inside of a minute 30 before halftime. Two timeouts. This is an eternity of time. Still, Jance can take his time now. Jance flushed from the pocket, flips it short and incomplete. You know, Steel Jance had to fight just to earn the starting job before the beginning of the season. Remember, Jerome Tiller was a quarterback that had played late last year. There was a three-way quarterback race with Jared Barnett, Jance, and Tiller. Tiller was deemed academically ineligible for the entire season at the start of the year which really turned it into a two-man race. And Steel Jantz, you see, he does have the natural ability to win that position battle outright. He's just glad to be healthy again. Lost his confidence when he injured his leg mid-season. Steps up. Jantz takes off, and he'll dive forward for about four. It'll be third and six. It was another different look by Rutgers defense right here trying to mug the center from Iowa State Tom Farniak. They had two defensive tackles. You're going to see right here in the middle of the screen two guys clogging what we call the A gap on each side of the center trying to make life difficult for those linemen inside. Steel Jans doing a good job buying time using his legs. We've seen the athleticism so far early this game and because of that scramble setting up a manageable third down. Still one timeout to spare for the Cyclones with a minute seven giving you time to answer the athletic trivia question and Jesse gave you two of the four answers <laughs> right off the bat. The other two Major League Baseball teams the Rutgers had used in bowl games. You know, they played out under the Diamondbacks in 2005 losing that bowl game and then the International Bowl. Devil Rays. Trial, yeah. yeah you called the one you said in 07. Tropicana down in Tampa Bay. A win for the Scarlet Knights. Yeah. Big player, third and five, as the Cyclones try to stop the bleeding. 17 unanswered points for the Scarlet Knights. They're in field goal range, but it's kind of marginal. Not a pressure look from Rutgers. They drop off. Jance loops it over the head of Darius Darks. So fourth down and a field goal attempt. Apparently coming up. And we talked about the windows condensing down in this area of the football field. You got to be able to pull the trigger when you see it open up as a quarterback. A little bit of hesitation there by Steele Jance on a throw to Darius Darks that he could have caught on the sidelines to keep that play alive. Just the passing game, just not crisp right now for Iowa State. The timing hasn't necessarily been great. And Shiano, who calls those defensive plays, pulling off the pressure that time, and Jance probably expected it. So here's Zach Geyer trying to make it. Third successful field goal attempt. It's blocked. Rutgers so good at doing it. And Shiano thought they had a chance. Justin Francis, the big fella, sprinting off the field. This is one of the Scarlet Knights specialties. That's Justin Francis's third block yep. kick of the right season. The Tremendous athleticism. You're going to see him right over top of the center and just times it perfectly. He got double teamed at the point of attack. 6-4. Was able to rise up, <laughs> get that big left, there, left paw up there. Bat that football down. Very impressed tonight with Rutgers defense. When they have their backs to the wall, they've bent at certain times. When they get inside that 30, 25 yard area with their back to the wall, they've been lights out. It's four times, Jesse. The Cyclones have been in Rutgers territory. They come away with only six points, the two field goals in their first two possessions. Now here's the question if you're Rutgers, now do you are you looking for points here deep down in your own territory? Yeah. As the freshman flips it short, 
Martinek as a flag comes out, picks his way across the 40, and Jersey Joe is still running, but this one likely to come back. Early in the play, there was a flag in the holding zone. Holding, 60 on the offense. 10 yard penalty, first down. Now, Caleb Ruckett made the big block in the touchdown run, nullifies a 41 yard gain. Looking forward to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Stanford and Oklahoma State. You and John Saunders will be out there manning the studio. Spending a lot of points in this one. You know, it's interesting. I'm not so sure either defense has really seen an offense like what they're going to see come this game. And Stanford, we all know, does a great job defensively stopping the run. They're averaging, giving up only 90 rushing yards per game right now. But Oklahoma State, with all those spread formations, they get going with Joseph Randall and Jeremy Smith. It would be a tremendous challenge. For Bill Young, a defensive coordinator of Oklahoma State and those Cowboys on that side of the football, try and make Andrew Luck and Stanford 67, one 56, like I don't know if I'm going to go with that Baylor high. I don't know. Like 17 <laughs> touchdowns. Let me take the under on that. Um, Caleb Ruck was arguing with the official. He didn't like the holding call. What what center does like a holding call <laughs> against him? But after the the 41 yard it was nullified they'll just take a knee and, and go to the locker room with an 11 point lead and it is unfortunate when you consider where Rutgers would have the ball right now had they not had that holding call they'd be knocking on the door setting themselves up for San Santee and a potential field goal here take a 14 point lead potentially in at halftime after a slow start for the Rutgers offense you do get the running game going Joan Jamison a pair of touchdown runs and Iowa State after a couple of promising drives, producing just 141 total yards in the first half. So the guys from across the Hudson River in the race, an early 6 0 hole, scores 17 straight points and lead at halftime of the New Era Pinstripe Bowl. Tom Rinaldi working his way towards Hall Roads. Trying to get a word with the Cyclones coach. And he's got him, Tom. Thanks very much, Chris. Well, I jump out to a 6 0 lead. Rutgers scores 17 unanswered. How do you flip that momentum around? Got to finish drives. Got to finish drives as an offensive football team. We've converted one third down, I believe, in, in, in 30 minutes of football. We stalled out twice. It's good to get six points, but you got to get touchdowns in this game. How would you assess your team's play on the line of scrimmage and stopping their rushing offense? Well, I think uh, uh, in the second quarter, they took over physically with their offensive uh, uh, style of play, and, and they were uh, banging off too big a chunks of yards in that quarter. Appreciate it, Paul. Thank you. Chris? Coach is right. Just one for eight on third down. We'll see if it's going to be Jans or Barnett in the second half. In the meantime, back to Reese Davis in the studio. Reese? Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of Capital One Bowl Week, set for the second half of the New Era Pinstripe Bowl. Iowa State jumped out to a 6-0 lead. Jesse, Rutgers 17 unanswered points, and they'll get the ball to start the third quarter. But we've seen plenty of resilience this season from the Cyclones. You know, we heard Iowa State head coach Paul Rhodes tell Tom Rinaldi right before the end of that half, they got to find a way to stay on the field offensively. And I think it's imperative right now for Iowa State to get back to running the football early in possessions. We saw early in this football game their ability having success with the zone read, giving it to running backs, allowing Steel Jantz to get outside the pocket on the poles, and that allowed them to set up second and third manageable situations where they got in trouble in this first half was on third and long. When they were too predictable, Greg Shannon able to dial up too much pressure. It's led to two sacks, one of those being a critical play where Jared Barnett fumbled and gave Rutgers possession inside the five-yard line. Yeah, it was Barnett early on, and I always say just marched down the field, got into the red zone with a couple of possessions. Then Jance came in, and he had success running as well. Yeah, he really did, and coming in, he provides the same kind of elements. So you don't have to change yourself philosophically as an offense just because there's a bigger, slower quarterback in the game of Steel Jance. He's got the ability to run this entire offense. We see when it was second, third, and long, this Rutgers defense able to pin their ears back, and again, the key play came on a crucial third down, Jared Barnett fumbling, the ball spitting out, and then Valone picking it up, trucking down the field, get the football inside the five-yard line. Now, Iowa State's defense held up, only gave up a field goal in a sudden change situation, but the offense has to get back to establishing the run, being physical at the line of scrimmage. Mahoney kicks it away. 
This is Jordan Thomas. Knocked down hard at the 25 yard line. So we've seen four quarterbacks used, and each staff faces a decision. What do you go with in the second half? It was Nova showing some promise, the young guy coming on late in the first half. True freshman. Get back with Dodd. Yeah, true freshman Gary Nova going to get the start here in the second half. He had a really good rhythm and a flow to this offense there at the end of that first half. He was helped out a lot by their ability to run the football. Didn't take a lot of big chances with him throwing the football. But we are going to see Chase Dodd again here in the second half. You can rest assured. On the reverse and being knocked down by a blocker was Miles Schuler. The speedster came around the edge, but penetration by the Cyclones knocked the blocker <laughs> back into his path. Rutgers <laughs> trying to get the edge here on the play, and it looked like this wide receiver might get outside the very last second. It's the fullback, Michael <laughs> Burton, who gets his legs tangled up, and as a result, it's a four-yard loss. Not the way you want to start here in the second half. Now setting up a passing situation for Rutgers early. Burton showing that at 232 is a good blocker and a, not a bad tackler. A good tackler as well. Has a flag before the snap as Nova fires it short. Outside, 48 on the defense. Five yard penalty, second down. So they get back the five yards that they gained on the first down play. It's back to second and ten. Well, you see. The mindset here with the true freshman quarterback under center easy completions trying to get Gary Nova into a rhythm here at the start of the second half. Keep that confidence high. He's played well so far in this football game with that offside penalty now bringing us back to second and nine. White motions into the slot, but he laid a hand off to Jamison. It was an effective runner in the first half and a couple of touchdowns. Stopped by Klein after just a couple here. It's going to be so critical for Iowa State defensively to get back to winning on first and second down like this. Trying to make plays, tackles close to the line of scrimmage and make Rutgers one-dimensional. Make the young quarterbacks, be that Gary Nova, be that Chase Dodd, have to throw the football to stay on the field. Remember, it's an Iowa State defense that likes to mix up its coverages. See if they can confuse Gary Nova now here before his pre-snap, move some guys around. 5,000 Cyclone fans have made the journey on their feet, trying to get their defense going, get momentum back to the beginning of this third quarter. Nova fires across the middle, knocked down. It was A.J. Klein right in the traffic pattern, and they forced the three and out. Nice job by this defense, playing a big zone coverage, keeping everything in front of them and just reacting. See the big wide receiver posting up over the ball, D.C. Jefferson at tight end. But a nice job of reaction by the linebackers in the second unit, able to bat that ball down. Now, so much possession. of this defense is about A.J. Klein and Jake Knott, the two linebackers. Oh, they both played well this afternoon. Warren pushed back and an over-the-shoulder fair catch made inside the 20-yard line. So Iowa State will take over down 11. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. It was a game that reshaped the championship chase of Friday night, November the 18th, from 24 7 down. The Cyclones rallied to tie Oklahoma State to 24. Quinn Sharp pushed the field goal, and we skipped to overtime. Jake Knott tipped the ball away from Blackman. Duran Burton made the pick, and then Jeff Woody just muscles into the end zone in double overtime, four touchdown dog. Iowa State showing tremendous resilience. Jesse, they overcame so much. You know, in the BCS Bowl matchup, which looked like this, would have looked very different if the Cowboys had escaped Ames with that victory. They would have been playing LSU in the BCS championship game. It would have been K-State the Sociedos Festival, and the sugar would have been different. Six degrees of separation. It's amazing to think if Nebraska and Colorado had not defected and left the Big 12 Conference this year on the schedule, Iowa State was not supposed to play Oklahoma State. How much everything changes in a very short amount of time. Now, Oklahoma State had to take care of business. They did not do that, but it's interesting to wonder what if. 
chances in the game at quarterback, and he hands off on the edge. Kasim Green with the tackle for a loss against Jarvis West. So they go with Jance to open the third quarter. And I, and I think that's the right play, but watching the speed of Rutgers, this is a much faster defense this year. And Greg Schiano made the conscious effort to switch positions throughout the offseason, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Let's go and I show pressure. Darius Reynolds makes the catch and gets away from David Rupp. Get up, Reynolds still running. Fighting across midfield now we'll check the marker which came way back before the snap it was at the line of scrimmage the gain was 33 the nice job by Steele Jantz identifying the pressure Outside. 94 on the defense a penalty's declined first down Scott Ballone was in the neutral zone the only question was did he cause one of the offensive linemen to rock back but no the, the play will stand yeah Steele Jantz looked out he saw the corner uh, blitz coming and the answer to that by Darius Reynolds, just a sight adjustment, just kind of a drift throw. Nice job by Jantz, understanding where his answer was for that pressure. Two-yard pass turns into a big game. Play clock at two. They barely get the snap off. They're not running that hyper tempo offense white is just knocked backward by justin francis we talked about the position changes on defense this year and cornerbacks became safeties safeties became outside linebackers linebackers became defensive ends kasim green Big East Defensive Player of the Year, a guy that played free safety last year was moved to linebacker so this defense could get faster and we've seen him flying around the field today it's a much faster unit than they were a season ago Williams, such an instinctive player, leader in the conference in tackles per game. Again, Rutgers showing pressure right up the middle. Now they back off. Jans looking left, loops the throw way over the head of West. Rutgers right now content defensively to just sit back and find out if these Iowa State quarterbacks can pick them apart. Not a lot of big windows here. There was a small opening on that play, but Jarvis West, only five foot seven, trying to work the sidelines. That's a ball that you have to get down as a quarterback. And here we go again, Chris, yeah. third and long. This is where you have to anticipate pressure. And they're gonna show it. This is where Paul Rudd's told Tom Rinaldi, this is the, is the key to the first half, yeah. inability to convert on third down. This is tough, they need nine. One for eight right now. And they show pressure. Jance takes his shot downfield, throws it up for Reynolds, but there's good coverage by Logan Ryan. There's no chance for the receiver to make a play. Tremendous coverage, this defense marrying together. There's a free blitzer coming through the line of scrimmage. If Steele Jance is going to complete this, it has to be a perfect throw. Logan Ryan, the best cover corner on defense for Rutgers. It was Deron Harmon. You mentioned that the safety is an all-conference player coming yeah. through on the safety blitz. And these Iowa State quarterbacks have really not had any idea what to expect yeah. on third down and very little execution. They were able to flip field position, just getting the punt away. It's Vanderkamp, and they'll knock it dead inside the five. So, no points, but Iowa State does pin Rutgers back. And college football, the new era pinstripe bowl, is brought to you by Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy. Capital One Bowl week continues, 10 o'clock Eastern tonight. Big Ten versus Big 12. Iowa and Oklahoma. Sight Bowl. Again, no Marcus Coker for the Hawkeyes as Bob Stoops tries to beat his alma mater. Your prediction of that, Mr. Yeah, Palmer. I'm, I'm going to go with Iowa here. I think a lot of people may find that to be an upset. But we know no Ryan mm. Broyles for Oklahoma. No Jazz Reynolds playing wide receiver either. He's out with a kidney injury. Sis Don, the sophomore, back in at quarterback. And he hands to Jameson, who spins for a nice gain across the 15. So Gary Nova pretty effective in his couple series now it's back to Dodd yeah, I think Dodd deserves the opportunity to come back in and play at this game with the exception of one three play series after they recovered the fumble deep down in Iowa State territory in the first half Chase Dodd has been automatic tonight throwing the football throwing on time making good decisions he's been extremely accurate provided a lot of balance for this Rutgers offense Iowa State's gonna have to bow up and stop this running game where they're gonna have no chance to stage a Another rally this afternoon. 
this is what Rutgers wants to do and the offensive line is beginning to gain some confidence and gain a push you see the issues that shifting and formating can create for a defense here lining up in what looks like a spread look you motion the fullback back into the eye formation they pull alignment at the point of attack big bodies right now getting tremendous surge to this Rutgers front and they're just consistently pushing Iowa State back up front already over their average rushing yards per game this season at 99 now and knock down after a short game tough all it's a pick your poison dilemma to an extent if you're Iowa State on defense right here because do you want to bring the extra eighth defender into the box to stop the run and then risk one-on-one -on -one coverage outside with Mohamed Sanu that's the question and you, you kind of got to decide what you want to do are you content to try and slow down the run control your gap responsibility with six and seven players inside how much trust do they have with Chase down here, Jesse, 11 point lead. Shiano certainly doesn't want a turnover down here at his own end. No. Second and nine. It's Schuler in motion again, and God flips it in the flat to Jamison. Powers past the first tackler, knocked down at the 25. It'll set up third and seven. We've seen a couple times tonight, Jamison, for a small running back, being tremendously tough, breaking tackles. He's had an outstanding game. And when you forecast the 2012 season next year, one big area of improvement Rutgers has to have is at the running back position. And if this game is any indicator as to where this position as a group can go, I think Juwan Jamison's really making a strong case that this could be a much better offense next year because of their chance to be productive at running back. Savon Huggins, the running back, he's not quite healthy. He's missed the last three games with a knee sprain. He's part of the mix, too. Yeah. On third and six. Dot. Flushed. Still looking. Now tucks it and slides across the 30. I think he's going to be just short, Jesse, of a first down. Klein came up, and the quarterback did a foot feet first slide there. When plays break down, wide receivers have to help their quarterbacks out. And that was a bad example of good scramble rules by these wide receivers. You're going to see Chase Dodd move out to his right side. And he's got two receivers just staying stationary. They're not working to get open, not giving their quarterback anywhere to go with the football. And as a result, <laughs> fourth down. Did you see Klein come flying <laughs> over? Dodds, I'm, I'm going to slide feet first here. And that, that hustle by Klein kept the quarterback from making the first down. Well, Greg Schiano very unhappy with that last possession, letting Chase Dodd know about it. Dorner. Side spin boot that Horn will let bounce. And it takes a good Rutgers bounce. Rolls dead at the 13-yard line. 57-yard punt, so good work by the offense. Is flipping the field position coming up. We'll look at my and Jesse's New York, and they're very different, I, I'm told. I, I guarantee you. Well, Chris Brown is probably going to talk to you about the Empire State Building or the Statue of Liberty and all the touristy places. And Tom Rinaldi can't tell you anything because he's from Brooklyn. But I just start my day in Central Park. Great place to go for a jog or walk your dog. Later in the day, head downtown to the West Village. Walking up and down Bleecker Street, great shopping, great restaurants. My favorite there is called the Little Owl. And finally, to end the night, heading on down to Meatpacking District. You got the cobblestone streets, tremendous energy, tons of supermodels, and great restaurants. I think the best is called the Darby. <laughs> Supermodels. That's all true. Chris, you know, you and your beautiful wife, Jen, and I, the three of us, have spent some time down in the meatpacking district. Not as much sun, as you have. When the sun's gone down. Yeah. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. No, I knew your night would end on the cobblestones <laughs> of the meatpacking district. Right. So that, that's where you're in New York. A little fitness yeah. early, a little shopping, yeah, and then it, nightlife. Yeah, get the fitness out, or out of the way early and head downtown. <laughs> Stay south. Things have been going south for the Cyclones offense since a couple of drives early. Now they have... Again, poor field position at the 13. Still trailing by 11 midway third quarter. It's Jantz in traffic. And a catch made, one of those tunnel screens to Aaron Horn. Mr. Rinaldi would like a rebuttal. He doesn't think he's from Brooklyn. He knows nothing, Rinaldi. You can let him get away with that? Supermodels. How weak is that? <laughs> I mean, listen, there are four other boroughs. There's somebody born in Brooklyn and who lived in the Bronx and taught high school there. So believe me, let me just tell you. Why don't you get on the subway once in a while there, Palmer? I'm See not, the way the other people live. I'm not afraid of the L train, Rinaldi. <laughs>
There's a completion as they work from poor field position. Darius Darks on the sidelines. When's the last time you journeyed outside of Manhattan? You know, I, I, maybe to Brooklyn, Williamsburg or something. I got two teammates I used to play with at the, for the Florida Gators who are living in Brooklyn now. So I actually get out there a lot more than people think. Huge fan of Williamsburg. Park Slope, where Tom Rinaldi's from. I'll give Rinaldi this. He's actually a true New Yorker, Chris. You and I are just transplants. Yeah, but he defected in New Jersey. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, we took that back, Rinaldi. Duran Hollis in the game as the setback to the right of Jansen. He's got the ball, but he's got nothing. And Rutgers defensive line beginning to impose itself. That was Ike Holmes, the sophomore. You know, Iowa State came here very excited about being a part of the New Era Pinstripe Bowl because only five Cyclones had ever been to the New York area before this game. Paul Rhodes excited to have his guys taste the city life and they really enjoyed it that the, the cell phone cameras have been out every stop of the way and they did visit those tourist places <laughs> that you mentioned that's what we're about to talk that about that was not part of my new york my friend. You'll, you'll, you'll see we'll see we'll see I, I have an idea where you might go second and 11. chance looking left delivering in that side and again a short gain it's aaron horn and it's going to be Yet another third down and long for this offense. It's an uphill battle again for Iowa State, and adversity is nothing new for this football team. When you consider their first three games of the year, they won but had to come back in the fourth quarter of each. You talked about that Oklahoma State game earlier this year. People forget missed field goal early in that game, five drop passes in the first quarter, interception for a touchdown. They were down 24-7 to to Oklahoma State and was able to come back. A lot of game left for Paul Rhodes and this football team. But they got to improve on one for nine and it's Jance retreating and then just throwing it away that play was almost doomed from the start as the Scarlet Knights again brought pressure another example of the newfound speed on defense for Rutgers Manny Abreu a converted linebacker now playing defensive end did a great job exploding up the field he forced Steel Jance to continue to backpedal really messed up the entire timing on that route forced the throw away that speed coming in handy for Rutgers. Wayne Warren, the safety, also came on the blitz. Close to the block was Logan Ryan. Sanu collects it and is dropped immediately. All right, Mr. Palmer, you talked about supermodels and I'm not saying I'm dating bars. them, just saying I'm looking at I them. have a different take on New York. I love the energy in New York, but to keep my sanity, I have to find nature. Riverside Park is my front yard, long pass to bike and run up along the Hudson. You can watch the sunset over New Jersey with a drink when it's warm. Central Park is close by. You can just get lost in there. Huge parcels of nature. It's where the dead bodies are found on Law & Order if you watch that show. And the High Line is a 20 block long park on an elevated train platform with lawns and trees, really a symbol of New York's innovation and inventiveness. It's all about nature for me as Rikers takes a shot downfield ball looped in the air for Brandon Coleman and flags come out as he draws the interference. Finally, they went after the five seven corner Reeves with a six six wide receiver Coleman 11 inch height advantage comes into play. We've seen Rutgers a couple times tonight try and take advantage of their six foot six freshman wide receiver. And those chances finally pay off here on what looks like is going to be a pass interference call. Reeves got up high, got his hand in the face, but get in no the way. For pass interference on the play. Now, Second down. They'll pick up the flag. I'll tell you what, take a look back at it again. I think that's great defense right there by Jeremy Reeves. Not enough contact to throw that flag. Chiano begs to differ, but they do pick the flag up. Look at the competitive nature here of Jeremy Reeves, who again we know is the smaller corner in this Iowa State defense. He's got a tremendous player, Leonard Johnson, playing across the field from him, but you'd argue Reeves has probably made more impact plays throughout the course of the year. He's been picked on more often, coming up big right there on that last play. A junior from Allen, Texas. This is Jamison on the delay, short game. So you, you don't you don't approve of my my nature spin on New York City? I, 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 I love the fact that you have the nature spin. I want to say this, by the way. I've gone on jogs down the river and run into this guy before having one of those drinks with his <laughs> wife. But I want to say this also. The high line he pointed out to you, that is in the meatpacking district, by the way. That's down by the Standard Hotel. It's, it's above those cobblestones <laughs> where you're prowling around so for supermodels and drinks. Me. You're staring at me while I'm doing all of that. I, 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 no, it's, I just think it's that that was an elevated train track. It was condemned. And no longer used. They turn it into an ur urban park. Very neat. Beautiful. Get a chance to check it out if you can. Third down and seven. 
And another incomplete. Both these offenses really struggling on third down. There have been so many third and longs. And another punt. Defenses have had their way so far in the third quarter. And some more miscommunication right here between the quarterback and wide receiver at Rutgers. Just not on the same page. And coming out, trying to be aggressive, throwing it downfield early. But a good job of Iowa State, you know, with an offense that's struggling right now, they're coming out and they're competing, forcing three and outs, trying to give them an opportunity to get back in this game. Combined three for 19, both teams on third down. Dorner gets it away. Horn in traffic, makes the catch, darts upfield. Skips out across the 45, so finally the Cyclones will have good field position to work with as they try to cut into this lead. Busy Saturday, Capital One Bowl week continues with Texas A&M and Northwestern in the Meineke Car Care Bowl. At 3.30, there are games on both ABC and ESPN. And then in prime time, the Auburn Tigers against the Virginia Cavaliers and the Chick-fil-A Bowl inside the dome. I'm excited about Virginia. The season they've had this year, getting set to play Auburn in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Well, Mike London getting a contract extension, much deserved. Had them knocking on the door to play in that ACC championship game right before losing against in-state rival Virginia Tech. He got knocked flat when they were knocking on the <laughs> no door doubt. by the Hokies, though. So Jance in at quarterback, and the Rutgers defense has begun to swarm the ground game. White's dropped for a loss again. It's a benefit to this Rutgers defense to be so active. As you take a look at some of the longest active bold win streaks right now, Rutgers with four in a row could make it five here today that's nope, nobody's won that, more than four yeah, bowl games that's, in a row that's in impressive we saw usc some other big names on that list mississippi state which is coming up yeah. they've won four bowl games yeah. in a row dan mullen getting them ready to go here in the postseason once again i always say just behind the sticks as we say second and long an uncomfortable position for this offense jan flips it almost picked off by kasim green and now a flag comes in late Shiano about 15 yards out on the field. Unhappy with this Whoa. apparent call. Pass interference. 20 on the defense. First down, spot the foul. There was a moment on this play that Kasim Green gets his arms wrapped around Albert Gray, or Albert Gary, excuse me. At the bottom of the frame, you're going to see Gary. Here's Kasim Green, number 20, running an inside slant throw. Kind of wraps him up. He lets him go, however, mm. and then gets his hands out. You know, I don't you like I, the call. No, I don't like the call. And I'm a quarterback, and I think that that was. You a think clean everything play. is past the no, reverse? Well, that, that one I think was clean. Here's the reverse. The drop for a huge loss is Lentz. Not fooled was Deron Harmon. Another strong play by the All-Conference safety. Iowa State struggling to find ways to beat the pressure right now from Rutgers. This time, Greg Shiano dials up a safety blitz. Harmon into the backfield. They try and take advantage of all this speed and the fast flow Rutgers defense running sideline to sideline, but they run right into the teeth of the blitz, and it's another giant loss. You lose big yardage on first oh. down. You, you're not going to produce many productive drives for Iowa State. Second and a mile. Rutgers just drops back. Jance has time, but delivers across the middle, and it's picked off. Steve Bohorn is to the ground, makes the interception. A flag is down. We'll check that. But Bohorn has good coverage and a low throw from Jance. Holding 74 on the offense. The penalties decline. First down, Rutgers. So the turnover stands and the turnover troubles continue for the Cyclones. Tremendous coverage on the top of the screen here actually forces this turnover. Still, Jance wanted to throw the curl at the top of the screen, and you see Kevin Snyder getting out underneath that route. That forced Steel Jance to clutch. He has to come back now to his second receiver, throwing it too far inside, not seeing Boharness draped in front of his wide receiver. Bad decision. Tremendous coverage, though, on the initial wide receiver to force that turnover. So in the closing minutes of the third quarter, once again, the Iowa State defense is going to have to come up with a big stop to stay in this game. But on first down, it's Jamison powering forward for a nice game. You know, Chris, a moment ago, we were talking about the success Rutgers has had here recently in bowl games. And Greg Schiano has really changed the expectations here at Rutgers. This is the birthplace of college football. They'd only been to one bowl game in 135 years before Greg Schiano showed up 11 years ago. They've now gone to bowl games six of the last seven years. Bowl games are now the norm. 
And he's set an expectation level at Rutgers where just going to bowl games and winning them is not enough. They want to take no, they the want next step. Game. They want to win the Big East Conference. And that's the goal still needs, is out there that they need to reach. Do you feel like they'll be one of the favorites in the Big East next season along with West Virginia, assuming the Mountaineers are still in the conference with those two lawsuits against the school and against the conference still in the courts. As of now, the Big East is planning a schedule around West Virginia being in this league. And I think the Mountaineers and the Scarlet Knights and perhaps USF would yeah. be the preseason favorites. And I think Greg Schiano feels like he's very close now. This is the most talent he's ever assembled in the 11 years he's been at Rutgers. He's got some big time recruits coming in. They've got some transfers coming in. RJ Dill, three year starting offensive lineman at Maryland coming in next year immediately you're going to help solidify this offensive line Rutgers going to be able to make a push next season potentially getting to a BCS bowl game Jamison cuts it back Jawan Jamison into the secondary and Rutgers beginning to really wear down that cyclone defense Leonard Johnson made the stop but they moved the sticks again I'm very impressed by the toughness of Jawan Jamison again a guy that's only 5'8 198 pounds but he can carry the load that's his 19th carry right now on the day. He had 34 carries earlier this year against Cincinnati. Not a very big guy, but that doesn't mean he gets beat up. He's tough. You can give him the rock through the course of 60 minutes. 100 yard game for Jamison again playing because playing a lot because Jeremy Deering unable to go with the ankle. Inside of 30 seconds in the third quarter. Jamison again cuts it back. Beginning to look a little weary in that Iowa State defensive side. Little running back able to wear this defense down, looking a lot like a Ray Rice right there with the vision, the cuts, the quickness. Wow, that's big praise. It's Iowa State having some issues. Number 23, not number 27, but as the Scarlet Knights <laughs> sprint to the other end, they're looking to build an 11 point lead as the fourth quarter is coming up from Yankee Stadium. Game summary brought to you by Marriott. I always say it, a couple of effective field goal drives in the first quarter. No scoring since. Rutgers cashing in a fumble to a field goal. I've got a couple of takeaways. This is a big possession right now for this Iowa State defense. Critical back to the wall inside your own red zone. If you can hold them to a field goal, it's only a 14 point game with 15 minutes to go. Got on the reverse. Hands it off to Miles Schuler. And Schuler shoved hard into the barrier after about a five yard gain by Terran Benton. They showed him in motion a lot, finally handed to him. And that's just another way by Frank Signetti and his, his offensive coordinator at Rutgers to try and keep Iowa State off balance on defense. You have to hand that football off yep. every once in a while so that the defense respects the wide receiver coming around in motion. Oftentimes in the running game, you use receivers in motion to try and freeze an unblocked defensive end. Good job play calling there, trying to mix it up for Rutgers. Second down, Jameson hitting the backfield, spins away. He'll still lose about a yard. Jake McDonough blew the play up. Rutgers rushing offense was such a weak spot, Jesse, all season long. Sputtered a bit early, but they've really gotten going. You know, they've had a lot of success in the middle of the field, and we talked earlier in the day about Batim Bujari, a freshman, that normally plays right guard as a backup being put in but starting left guard and they moved a bigger player at left tackle and Desmond Wynn to try and gain weight up front. I think that's demonstrated itself particularly in the middle of the field today running the football. Down on the field senior nose guard for the Cyclones Stephen Rumpelhammer. Rumpelhammer really had a tremendous year this year a guy that was born in Holland moved to Tulsa Oklahoma when he was a junior in high school he had played club football in Europe up until that point he's made 27 starts now for Iowa yeah. State been a big playmaker a key cog for them inside and we've talked about all the success Rutgers has had running the football inside this is a defensive tackle they cannot afford to lose yeah, he didn't want to finish his career limping off the no field doubt. you can see the reluctance to leave and you talked about what a 
a big play this is now. They've got Rutgers in a third and long. A field goal keeps it to That's a huge. 14 point game. Yeah. And you got to know right now if you're Iowa State, where is number six? Find him, find Mohamed Sanu. He's lined up in the slot. Will be at the bottom of your screen. It's been pretty quiet for a while. Expecting the option route right here again. A two way go for him. You got to bracket him, lock him up. There's Sanu in the slot to the left. Sits down, catches the pass across the middle, but he's dragged down short of a first down. So they were keying in on number six there. Klein made the tackle. It's a nice job by the defense of getting depth in their drops and keeping the football underneath them. It was the linebacker, A.J. Klein, co-Big 12 Defensive yep. Player of the Year, that did a great job identifying the route coming across his face, able to make and secure the tackle and force what we think will be a field goal. Yeah, so Here often Sanu is able to knock down a smaller defender and get away, but Klein's a strong guy, sure tackler. One of those triple figure <laughs> tackle guys. <laughs> no doubt. So San Santi is one for two, making his previous short attempt, tries to make it a 14 point lead, and he does knock it through in his final college game. Can Iowa State's offense get going? There's time, but the deficit is now 14. Today's quarterback stats brought to you by Dove Men Plus Care. It was Barnett getting the start, Jesse, and making some effective plays with his legs early, but then struggled with the passing game, and Jance has come on, and if you look at these guys on the sidelines, you were just saying, Barnett didn't have the body language of a guy who's, who's getting back in there anytime looks soon. Looks like he's anxious to get back in, and head coach Paul Rhodes told us that Barnett was going to get the start, but if he did struggle early, he was not going to hesitate to put Steel Jance in this game. I think from a passing standpoint, Jance, to me, has looked more comfortable. He hasn't necessarily been night and day more effective, but he's brought a little bit more uh, continuity, I think, to this offense. And, you know, I was watching Barnett run out onto the field here for the second half, and he looked like, you know, he was just a little ginger a little bit, the way he was running. I'm not so sure if he's necessarily 100%. We saw him get up very slowly after he took that sack and the fumble. That may have rattled him a little bit, and... So far in the second half, it's been Steel Jance's game. Dorner boots it deep. And this is West. And West is knocked down at the 23. Well, there were a couple of opening drives by Iowa State. Ended up producing field goals. They've also had a blocked field goal. And then lately, it's been unproductive possessions they haven't been successful on first down they've been made predictable by this Rutgers defense and second and third and long you're playing right into the hands of this athletic fast Rutger defense able to bring pressure from all over the field and Iowa State with the exception of one throw to the tight end in this game has not been able to handle the pressure from Rutgers they have no answers they turn and hand it to white but another unproductive first down play that's been the problem they simply got to find a way to, to get ahead in the count against this Scarlet Knights defense well, that's going to be a theme I think moving forward Tom Herman the offensive coordinator made big news here recently Urban Meyer hiring him as his offensive coordinator and his quarterback coach at Ohio State Tom Herman a great mind offensively been here three years running the spread offense they're gonna have a new face calling plays next year Paul Rhodes said he wants to stick with the spread offense. He won't name who that replacement will be till after this bowl game. Jance. Oh, had a man and it was right and he just flipped it over his head. He was throwing off his back foot, sensing pressure, but there was yards to be made there. You know, and again, white jerseys running clean at the quarterback, affecting throws. The bottom of the screen, Logan Raid locked up man to man. Nobody accounts for the receiver in the slot. That's another missed throw tonight. We've seen a couple of guys wide open. Could have been big plays. I mean, he might still be running down the sidelines. Here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> one, for, one for ten on third down. <laughs> and here comes the pressure. You see a radar look from Rutgers. Guys standing up, not putting their hands down on the ground. Iowa State trying to decipher as is Steel Jance telling his running back who to block because they don't know right now. Yeah, ball harness and green, the linebackers both showing pressure up the middle, and they'll burn a timeout to talk about it. State. They're first. It's beginning to get a little urgent for Iowa State on these third down conversions. They need nine when you come back. ESPN 
college football, the New Era Pinstripe Bowl, is brought to you by New Era. Fly your own flag. Visit us at neweracap.com. The frustrating afternoon for Iowa State. Quarterbacks just 10 for 23 combined, and again, just one for 10 on third down. See what they've cooked up after the timeout, Jesse. Here comes that bear look again up front for Rutgers, covering up the center, both guards. Now they, now they bail out of it, looking into a big zone. Pressure comes. Jance flushed. Flips it downfield and has Lentz open. Lentz a first down across the 40. So they finally deal with that pressure and convert him to third down. It is critical for a quarterback, particularly playing in the spread offense, and for any offense for that matter, to be able to extend plays and create with his legs. We've seen Steel Jantz have success running the football early, but right there doing a nice job buying enough time to get the football thrown downfield. Crucial play. Let's see if they can build on it. Well, it's an incompletion right through the hands of Albert Gary. The way their defense is getting worn down inside 12 and a half minutes down 14 you can almost sense the urgency building the Cyclones need something out of this and they got to be able to stay on the field to give that defense a break but you're right Chris here we are in the fourth quarter clock ticking got to find a way to generate points you need more success on early downs over the middle Lentz again collects it running free has the corner Gets a block from Reynolds. Still on his feet. Down to the 22. So Lentz a couple of huge connections with Jans, and now the Cyclones in the red zone quickly. Steel Jans does a great job identifying a matchup and a mismatch. He's going to have his slot wide receiver working against a defensive end in Manny Abreu. That's an easy pitch and catch. Big, big play. And they ratchet up the tempo again. But Jantz on first down is dropped for a big loss. Kevin Snyder, the freshman linebacker, showing some promise for the future. Another good play. And there's a great answer by Greg Schiano for the play call on defense. After giving up a big explosive play, dial up the pressure right away on first down and try and knock Iowa State back out of scoring position. Lose nine. Cyclones maybe thought they could get the Scarlet Knights defense on their heels with a quick tempo after the big gain it backfired Play clock at four As Woody shifts to the right play clock at one better hurry. Nope False start 72 on the offense Five-yard penalty, second down. Assembly flag, but they're running out of time anyway. And Paul Rhodes is irate right now on the sidelines. He needs the sense of urgency to go way up for this offense right now, just taking too much time at the line of scrimmage. But again, it's the pressure from Rutgers that is causing all this confusion. This offensive line, they don't know who they're blocking. How do you feel about second and 24? Second in California, don't love it. Chance from the pocket fires downfield jump ball over the head of Darius Darks Jones and Deron Harmon bracketing him Trump, third down yeah trying to force a football that easily could have been intercepted that would have been a critical mistake down inside the red zone you see what Rutgers defense has been able to do here today with the forced turnovers the sacks playing and the, they've been living in Iowa State's backfield today and it's been because of the pressure it's a big number for tackles for loss for the day and for the season for the Scarlet Knight defense. Chance retreats on third and 24. A flag is down as the ball is flipped over the middle, and I think Justin Francis got a hand on it. Looks like a hold. It's going to be an offensive hold. Manny Abreu from the defensive end position was applying the pressure, and you talked about the travails of the Cyclone wow. offensive line to continue. No, on that time. Rutgers decided to bring holding Pritt 27 on the offense that penalty's declined fourth down so 
Fourth and 24. A field goal doesn't do them a great deal of good, and they're really in very, very marginal field goal range anyway. <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked right here, fourth and long, if Greg Shannon just. 10 yards, automatic first down. So they're saying holding on to defense. There's a contradiction to the earlier call. That, that changes everything. It's like Wayne Warren. Free safety was called for holding Shiano on that last play. He wants to chat wow. with Randy Smith, the Conference USA official here. Of course, defensive holding carries yeah, with it an no automatic doubt. first down. Wade Wayne Warren up. was the safety man that they apparently flagged, and he'll he'll run off the field. Shiano still wants an explanation. He's still on the field. There's three coaches on the field. Fresh set of downs. Dramatic shift there is now it's at the 26 and the Cyclones have a fresh set. In traffic there. Dangerous throw to Aaron Horn. He picks up seven. Bottom of your screen, let's take a look at what they apparently flagged the defensive hold. You see 27 here. He's going to be coming in pressure. He tries to mug the running back right there. Yeah. It's a great hold. It's what's called a green dog. He's basically waiting to see if the running back's going to stay and protect. If he does, he blitzes. If he doesn't, he has to cover him. He guessed wrong. Good call. Yeah, there was confusion, but the call was correct as Woody breaks free. And Woody breaks a tackle and scores. And suddenly, it's a one-possession game. Jeff Woody, a former walk-on, a local product in the Central Iowa Metropolitan League. Tough runner, he's the most physical back right now in this backfield for Iowa State. There's a way you handle the pressure. You gash them on a running play. You roll the dice when you want to send heat. Very, very, we've not seen very frequently tonight, Iowa State able to make them pay for doing it. That's the one of the few times tonight they've made Rutgers pay. Geyer makes it a seven-point game. You saw the Iowa State band there. They have obstructed view seats. They really couldn't get a good look at Jeff Woody breaking free, getting into the end zone. They could figure out what was going on. We got a ball game all of a sudden. Looking forward to it, Reese. Meanwhile, here, Iowa State has battled back, trying to keep the Big 12 undefeated in bowls. That conference 3-0 entering this new era pinstripe bowl. And Iowa State finally after seven possessions Jesse where they were empty hadn't scored since midway in the first quarter 76 yard 10 play touchdown drive now I think the big key there with the penalty giving them a fresh set of downs down inside the red zone and finally able to gash Rutgers when they decided to bring pressure Mahoney's kickoff taken at the 13 yard line after a bobble by Jordan Thomas who fights out near the 30. Today's never settle play brought to you by H&R Block, the sixth rushing touchdown of the year for Jeff Woody. I think Iowa State has to find a way to scare Rutgers out from dialing up blitzes on almost each and every down. And here on this zone read, we talked about how they had had success earlier in this game, getting a push against a much smaller Rutgers defensive line. What are you doing a nice job getting into the second level open field moves they get on the board we got a one possession game. And it's the freshman Nova. And yeah. straight ahead. And that's very telling of the confidence yep. that Greg Schiano and his coaching staff have in the true freshman quarterback. Now all of a sudden the game's not as out of hand as it was just moments ago but sticking with the true freshman a big time possession for him to prove that he can manage this football team and this offense with the game on the line. That's a great point. Here's a guy that had nine interceptions and he lost four fumbles. Yeah. Had four turnovers of the game against West Virginia, which helped the staff look in other directions back to Dodd. Well, they trust him to throw on second and eight. They hand it off again, and Jameson has nothing. Well, he fights forward, actually, good effort. Looked like he was going to get stacked up for nothing. Ends up getting three, so it's third and manageable. And Iowa State defensively now beginning to roll the dice a little bit. There were a lot of maroon jerseys close to the line of scrimmage. You see all these players in here. There's eight or nine bodies close to the line of scrimmage intent on stopping the run. They're going to force the true freshman quarterback to beat them now. They do not care if Mohamed Sanu is playing outside one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to take their chances. See if they look for Sanu, who's caught six balls, but hasn't really broken free this afternoon. Play clock at five. 
Nova. Wanted it for a screen. Now just has to throw it away. And Iowa State's players jumping around as they get the stop. Huge win for Iowa State. Coming on the tail end of a touchdown to force a three and out and get the football back, try and generate more momentum. Great job by that defense taking the screen away. Smart play by Gary Nova there. Not trying to do anything foolish. Understanding when the play is dead. A punt is okay. Let your defense go back out and play again. Defense has been playing well. Dorner to punt it to Horn. It's a low kick, and Horn will have a chance. It is 21. Room up the middle of the field. And Iowa State will get good field position as they go back on offense, down just seven after the 20-yard return. From Pepper, Wisconsin and Oregon, the Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio, Monday, 4.30 Eastern time. Get to hop a plane early tomorrow morning. Join our contingent out nice. there in Pasadena. Which marquee running back, Monty Ball or LaMichael James, will have the bigger day, Jesse? You know, I think it's going to be LaMichael James. I think a lot of people question whether or not Oregon's defense can match up against the Wisconsin offensive line that averages 322 pounds. But if you go back this year, take a look at Oregon holding Stanford to only a buck 29 on the ground, USC to 139 on the ground. They held Spencer Ware of LSU under four yards per carry. They're not very big, but they're a lot tougher than people think. I don't think Wisconsin's gonna have an easier time running the football as people think. Now Leary's defense saying same song. We're supposed to be overmatched. We're supposed to get worn down by a big O line. We'll see. Yeah. So Jantz takes over. Now down just seven. Duran Hollis has it on the zone read, but he gets nothing. Greg Schiano, Jesse, in that last timeout. Watch what he does. He just tells his defense to take a deep breath, relax. Everybody listen. <sighs> Breathe in that South Bronx air and then just let it out. <laughs> what's, he, what's, what's he trying to communicate? No, the message, hey, they've just scored a touchdown. We've just gone three and out. The sky is not falling. Let's go play our brand of football. We're still winning. We're fine. Another effective play for the Rutgers defense on first down. Leaves Jantz with second and ten. Woody shifting around to the right. It's an option look. Takes the pitch, but runs out of room. The option to the boundary, but it was Logan Ryan, the corner, who's played a terrific game, cutting Woody down. You have to be a complete defensive back if you're going to play the corner boundary position in Greg Schiano's defense. And that's exactly what Logan Ryan is. Not only is he the best cover corner they have on their team, but look at his physicality at the play. point of attack, able to get off a block, put his face in the fan for a tackle for a loss, setting up yet another Third and long. Expect pressure. And there's the eighth tackle for loss by this Rutgers defense. Pressure up the middle again from the safety. And Dance gets it away, but couldn't get it to the open. Darius Reynolds was running there. Had an opportunity, but Jantz again backpedaling furiously. Couldn't quite make the accurate the, throw. The pressure from Rutgers tonight has had to force these Iowa State quarterbacks to make perfect Actually, throws. Actually, the throw was better than I thought. The edge should have been caught. They're not having a lot of time to get the football out of his hands. Even if that receiver makes that catch, he's very likely tackled short of the sticks. They just have not been able to find a lot of answers and try and scare Rutgers out from pressuring right now. I mean, there's no mystery. If it's second and third and long, Greg Schiano's bringing it until Iowa State can prove they can handle it. So Schiano got his team to take a deep breath, and they got what he wanted, a stop, a three and out. And on the offense will go back to protecting this seven-point lead with 6.40 to play as we check back in the studio with Reese Davis. Reese. Chris, we're taking you to Nashville in just under 21 minutes. Mississippi State and Vic Ballard over 1,000 yards rushing this year as the Bulldogs get set to take on the Demon Deacons in the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. Reese, in the meantime, it's Chase Dodd, the start of this afternoon, back in the ball game. Going with the more experienced quarterback, Jesse, trying to protect the ball in the lead. Better game manager, especially down here with the football deep in your own end. It's another first down run, and again, 
The Cyclones really crowding the line of scrimmage, and Jameson has nowhere to go. Shaquez Washington stopped him. In the big picture, I really love Greg Schiano's thought to play both quarterbacks in this game because the opportunity presented itself with 15 bowl practices to get each guy the reps necessary to feel comfortable playing in this game. Not as easy to do that during the regular season when you normally only have five days in preparation to get ready to play your opponent on the weekend. It's not enough reps to be split between two players during the regular season, but in bowl practice, it works. We've seen four quarterbacks this afternoon. <laughs> None of them have been particularly outstanding. Would you agree? No, I, I'd agree with that. This is Dodd. He'll take a shot downfield, loops it very high for Brandon Coleman, and the 6'6 receiver collects it. Coleman to the house. The home of the Bronx Bombers. They go deep for 86. A backbreaking touchdown if you're the Iowa State defense as Dodd comes back off the bench cold and makes a rainbow throw to the big fella. And then when sprinting down the field. They waited a long time, Jesse. They thought that Brandon Coleman presented a huge mismatch opportunity against a 5-7 corner as Reeves. A, as a quarterback, sometimes you have to be lucky when you pick your matchups. And Chase Dodd has two go routes mirroring each other. He had Mohamed Sanu on the other side of the field in bump and run. 99 out of 100 quarterbacks would have taken that matchup. I don't blame him for going for Brandon Coleman with the 11-inch height advantage over a much smaller corner in Jeremy Reeves. They tried this earlier in the half. Half. It didn't work, but a great job of putting the football up, just allowing his wide receiver the opportunity to locate the football and then try and high point the football. <laughs> his first catch of the afternoon is a guy who averaged 29 yards per catch at a 92-yarder against Connecticut, one of the few bright spots in the finale for the and Scarlet he, Knights. And he's a guy that this coaching staff feels can be the next great receiver here at Rutgers. You look at this, over the season, 33 plays, 30 or more yards, 12 of those resulting in touchdowns. They've been explosive. Brandon Coleman, only a freshman, they think he can be in the lines with a guy like Kenny Britt, Mohamed Sanu. He's the next great receiver here at Rutgers. He's very raw, but he has the physical abilities you just cannot coach. And with that frame, that is a mismatch nightmare for defensive coordinators week in, week out, not only in the Big East Conference, but whoever else has to play Rutgers on their schedule for the next several years to come. You would expect that Mohamed Sanu would declare for the draft. He hadn't said anything yet, but he talked about doing what's best for his family. That's usually a, a buzzword that means he's looking toward the draft. That would mean that Coleman's really going to be a, a guy counting it heavily as the go-to receiver next year. West tries to create a big play as the Cyclones are suddenly back in a 14-point hole. Jarvis West gets free, gets across midfield, 42 yards on the return, so five and a half to work with. They have to begin to go back to that up-tempo as we remind you that Capital One Bowl Week continues tonight. 10 Eastern talked about the Hawkeyes and the Sooners. ESPN Radio, ESPN3, and also streaming live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Bob Stoops, Kirk Ferentz, both coached under Hayden Fry and the same staff back in the day. Bob Stoops played at Iowa, facing off against his alma mater. So now real urgency for Jantz and the Cyclones. They flip it short here. This is Gary. He was able to get nine yards, and they have to get up and snap it now every 10 to 15 seconds. And I love the idea. Get the football out of your hands as a quarterback. Put it into the playmakers on the perimeter of the field where there's so much more space. Let them go and create first downs for you. I've not seen a lot of the quick game tonight from Iowa State. Sticks move after the first down. Jans looks right, fires to Gary again. He's got about 10 more. So move the sticks again, and the clock will stop briefly. Bulldogs and the Demon Deacons to follow. You know, in this two-minute style of offense fits right into what Iowa State does because the tempo they play at week in, week out. They're comfortable. Chance again over the middle. 
bobbling catch is made there by Aaron Horn, and now they're suddenly at the 11-yard line. You're seeing the difference between an experienced quarterback and Steel Jans and what we saw earlier with Jared Barnett, anticipation on throws, anticipating the window opening up over the middle of the field. Pull the trigger when you see it. have taken so far just 56 seconds and they're down threatening and remember this is an area of the field that Rutgers plays their best defense heading into this game they had allowed opponents to score only 69 percent of their possessions in the red zone tied for fourth best in the country their best defensive player Kasim Green being looked at by trainers grimacing his helmet is a few yards away again defensive player of the year in the Big East Conference and uh, Guy has been a leader out there this afternoon for Shiano's defense. Greg Shiano once again now rallying his entire team here on the sideline. He's got the defense around him. You get hurt as he hit Jance oh, after yeah. the throw here. They're going to have to make a play without their leader on defense here, and he's trying to get his guys fired up and motivated. We you take another look at this, you'll see Green here coming in on the delayed blitz. Just kind of lowers his head. It's hard to kind of see. just collapses. Right after running in, it looks like he's grabbing his his, his right his ankle. His right ankle, yeah. maybe, yeah. He just kind of planted or stepped on his foot or planted on it wrong. Yeah, oh, I think his right wow, ankle will get wow. twisted underneath oh, him, and God, you can you see to look at that. why wow. he's grimacing in pain. Oh, man, let me show you a look. It it was a little bit of a, a late bump on Jance in the first place, and wow. you just sort of relax as a player, don't you, near the end of a play. Just, I just think one of those freak things, Chris, just kind of his, his foot getting caught in the ground at the wrong time. Green and really Junior, Jesse, who well, just announced officially that he will yeah. return to Rutgers for his senior season. You saw the concern that was you know, obvious on the face of the Rutgers players. They're well aware of how important Green is and, and how much they like him. But it, it, in the meantime, it's been, I always say, moving down the field, quickly in four plays now in less than a minute to threaten yeah at this point down 14 you know, and this is an area of the field generally in the red zone as a defense you don't like to pressure you want to kind of sit back defend that goal line keep the football in front of you it's a thing that Rutgers has done very very well all season long it'll be interesting to see on this position uh, possession if they change their philosophy a little bit on defense considering they've had so much success now with pressure we're seeing why Iowa State was able to come back and and pull off unlikely victories early in the season triple overtime against Iowa they had to fight like heck to beat Northern Iowa yeah. went on the road against UConn of course the big upset against Oklahoma State from 24 7 down this is not by any stretch of the imagination one of the more talented teams you're going to see in bowl week but they're one of the more resilient yeah and I think those experiences have helped them deal with these situations much better than a lot of other teams throughout the country you talk to players they'll tell you that triple overtime win against Iowa helped prepare them for that double overtime win yep. against then number two Oklahoma State they understand the mindset when you get in games late head coach Paul Rhodes will be the first to tell you the best way to win a game is not to lose it don't do things to shoot yourself in the foot they've done that in this game early whether it be a missed field goal whether it be a penalty on a kick return touchdown that negated that whether it was two sacks one leading to a fumble and a score but this is a team that understands late in games what is required to win late and not a surprise they're not going to go away in this game and you claw back within seven and then you give up the 86 yard touchdown yeah. pass to coleman you think that's a a death blow, but no they, they've marched back down the field as they continue to attend to what appears to be a pretty significant ankle injury to Kasim Green. We'll check back with Reese in the studio. Hi, Chris. Thank you. BYU, after stumbling around early, Jesse, able to come away with a, a 10 win season. Mm. As you see, the Green finally set up in the entire Rutgers defense gathering around. Their leader back there to wish him well. This is clearly going to be an injury that's going to affect him in the offseason. It's just an it's an amateur see, prognosis, but it didn't look good. No, Let's go to Tom Rinaldi see what to, he can add to this situation. Tom. Well, Chris Rucker's official policy is not to release any injury information until it's cleared through their medical personnel. But clearly, you could see on the field as he's placed on the cart and being taken off, there was an air cast placed around that right ankle. You see Green raising up the fist. He is not only the defensive leader and conference player of the year defensively, perhaps the most popular player on the Rutgers roster. So certainly the team planning to rally around him, but a huge loss as he makes his way out trying to fight back tears and heading up through the ramp and off the field, Chris. 
He leaves everything out there every time he puts on a football uniform. Jesse, 13 tackles today, and now Rutgers defense has to quickly regroup, backed up as Iowa State is in scoring position. Kevin Snyder, the true freshman, has jumped into that linebacker position. He shows pressure up the middle as Jance lobs to the end zone. Well covered was Reynolds by Logan Ryan. It's been tough to deal with number 11 on the corner out there for the Scarlet Knights today. And that seems to be where Iowa State wants to try and take its chances. And Darius Reynolds, six foot two, 210 pounds almost, has been the most explosive wide receiver. He starts on an inside track, runs too far inside. You got to give credit to Logan Ryan for maintaining possession at his post outside. Rutgers now bringing more pressure. They're going to force Steel Jance to get this football out of his hands quickly and try and react to it in the air. Third down. Again, Jance has to backpedal and just throws it away. Coming very quickly was Wayne Warren, who's been an effective blitzer from the safety position. And it's fourth and ten. Well, he's still in the, the tackle box, and he just kind of spikes this in the ground. I'm not so sure why that's not intentional ground. Neither is Greg Shiano, who's going crazy. Now that looked like a. And there, there's clear. no receiver within the vicinity of where that was thrown. They can talk about it and sometimes they'll throw a late intentional grounding flag. I don't know if they're, they're saying conferring. that I don't know if they're saying that number eight James White was potentially in the area. He was cut blocking on the play. He wasn't even an eligible receiver in the play. But no flag and instead fourth wow. and ten. Wow. So this is the ball game. You would have to believe an empty possession here would doom the Cyclones. Number seven up top, press. Man to man against Logan Ryan. Nelson Reynolds. Play clock at three, two. And they just get a timeout. It's Rutgers calling a defensive yeah, timeout. Yeah. Their first. Well, it was. Greg Shiano went sprinting down the sidelines to get that. It might have been a delay of game if they hadn't called timeout. The play clock was at two seconds. Shiano didn't like what he saw. Good job. It's like he, he lost the chart. He's, he's, <laughs> he's been running. He's been jumping. He's been animated. You know, we know Paul Rhodes is animated. The emotion and the enthusiasm. Greg Shiano's matched Paul Rhodes with his facial expressions, the inhale, the exhale, up and down the <laughs> sidelines. I don't know, though. That, that might be one of those deals where he regrets calling the timeout. I think I always say it would have been backed up five yards well, it, had Rutgers not taken it. In fairness, you want to make sure you get the right defense call. But if they're in an alignment, maybe he recognized the guy wasn't lined up properly up front. You want to make sure this is the critical down of this entire game. Think of all the momentum that winning this game carries into the offseason, preparing for the 2012 season. Greg Schiano understands the significance of this play. He's going to make sure he gets the right defense on the field well, they confirm. The yeah, let's check with Tom. Tom? It was interesting to see Greg Schiano come sprinting out down the sideline to make sure the timeout was called and then sprint directly toward the officiating crew to continue, guys, to plead his case that, in fact, it should have been intentional grounding. The only white was blocking on the play, as Jesse mentioned. He spent at least a third of the timeout just pleading his case to the officials. Let's see what they've dialed up now on fourth and ten. Bunch formation here at the bottom of the screen. Going to try to buy access for wide receivers. Chance he said, looks to the left and throws into single one-on-one -on -one coverage. Incomplete. It's been a tough battle between Ryan and Reynolds all afternoon in the corner for Rutgers wins that one the same idea as we saw just a few plays ago looking for the back shoulder throw that is a perfectly thrown pass by Steel Jantz nowhere could he be put that better than on that throw but again Logan Ryan has made big plays tonight in coverage great job locating the football over his shoulder it's clean with his left arm he's made tackles in the backfield he's been locking up on Iowa State's best wide receiver he's won that one-on-one -on -one matchup wow on a possession where Kasim Green goes down they lose their leader on defense Logan Ryan a guy standing up right now stepping up he's only a sophomore that is big time he's gonna say he's a sophomore who was second team all-conference and you pencil him into the first team all-conference preseason team for next year no doubt what an afternoon mm. number 11 has had for Rutgers as the Scarlet Knights without Kasim Green their leader and best player 
able to once again hold Stiffen in the red zone. Cyclone said they took the ball away. Hold on here in the scrum. Were they able to pry it loose? No signal yet. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. oh, thought he'd come up with it. Wow. Well, you know, if you're Paul Rhodes and you're Iowa State, and you're down 14 points, you got two timeouts remaining. You start wondering if and when you want to start using these timeouts to get the football back. You know Rutgers is going to run the football and try to bleed as much clock away as they can. Nine bodies close to the line of scrimmage from Iowa State. They are selling out against the run. Die wants to use a lot of his play clock. He still has 10 seconds before he has to snap it. He's trying to protect the ball, moves forward. It'll be third and three. It's such a good sign. It's so impressive. Paul Rhodes now going to call a timeout. Of course, Chase Die to complete a pass here. Potentially not. You know, third and four, third and three, an area that Frank Signetti could dial up another run play. They see if they can get them outflanked on the sideline. But, you know, that's a great sign what we just saw there, Chris, with this running team looking ahead. You know, when a defense knows you're going to run the football and they, they sacrifice eight guys close to the line of scrimmage, you're still able to generate a gain like that. That's a good sign for you as an offense in terms of your physicality up front. With Jeremy Deering unable to go with an ankle injury, Juwan Jamison has been the workhorse for the Scarlet Knights, and he's our impact player brought to you by Capital One carried it 26 times for 129 yards and a couple touchdowns and he's been the workhorse we've talked about it all game long not a very big running back only 5'8 198 but bounced off tackles he's broken tackles he's made guys miss in the second level he's found the most success tonight running up the middle in the field done a good job in pass protection as well a real bright spot you know we keep forecasting to next year we've talked about how the offensive line has to improve and they got to get better at the running back position Juwan Jamison making a big statement here for himself and for this offense I think looking forward to the next season the offensive line has made a statement too we've talked about the moves they made reshuffling since the bad performance against Connecticut Sanu here in the slot go to guy critical down up if, top. if they throw it Jersey Joe Martinick instead takes the carry and he's dropped. Big tackle by Jake Knott. No gain, and they'll spend another timeout and preserve some time as Rutgers gets ready to punt. Great open field tackle by Jake Knott. This is a guy that has shown tremendous toughness throughout the course of the year. You go back and watch him play against Baylor. He dislocates his shoulder twice in the game and still comes away with 18 tackles. You look at the production this guy has put in throughout the course of the season. Everyone talks about A.J. Klein, and he's the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Jake Knott is an absolute war daddy playing opposite of A.J. Klein. He's also a guy that loves baseball. was very excited to play this game in Yankee City. And when the Cyclones came here for the walkthrough the other day, he brought his glove. I love that. players had the foresight to, good, good to bring them. their baseball mitts out here. Wouldn't you, though? <laughs> I would, too. You, know, you wanted to take BP here. I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you what. As soon as I found out we were lucky enough to get to call this game, I, I called you. I said, dude, get a bat. Let's go out here and take some <laughs> what BP. What did I say? It's going to be 21 degrees. <laughs> yeah, well, if I would known it was going to be 50 degrees like it is today, Fowler, you and I should have been in the box. We should have been in the cage. <laughs> They wouldn't let us on the field, but I'm sure you could go underneath there. <laughs> Easy stadium to sneak in and out of, isn't it? Aaron Horn to see if he can create some field position with a punt return. He's Dorner. Gets it away. Horn. Waves for a fair catch at his 30. So Iowa State. 316 to work with down by 14 as we check back with Reese. All right, Chris, just moments away from the start in Nashville, Chris Ralphs had an up-and-down season for Mississippi State. Mississippi State and Wake Forest will start on ESPN News if you guys aren't quite finished in Yankee Stadium. Just hoping that there are some more dramatics left in what's been a, a crazy season. But to have that empty possession stopped in the fourth and ten hurt a few minutes ago. Jance has to show real urgency. They almost have to go downfield. They'll, they'll concede throws like this to Aaron Horn. I am not a fan of prevent defense. Just keep running what's working. If you're up by two touchdowns, I get that. But Iowa State has not been able to handle the pressure. Don't stop doing that now.
Dance to scramble. And they'll slide after about a four yard gain. Here's a thought. If you are going to go prevent, <laughs> think about having a spy on the quarterback. You know, Oklahoma had a lot of success late in the season against Iowa State, dropping eight into coverage with a spy. Pressure in the backside, picked off. Picked off by Logan Ryan, who punctuates a tremendous afternoon with a clinching interception. Anything else the young guy can do? It's there. unbelievable. And another great play call by Grace. They, they keep going in his direction. Well, they brought pressure get again. A clue. <laughs> <laughs> Steel chance how to get that football out quickly. Miscommunication between he and his receiver. I think that was Darius Reynolds again. I mean, number They've 11 been, has wow. just been all over the place. Yeah, you know, that's impressive. I mean, he has won that one on one matchup with Darius Reynolds and just made plays. It feels like almost each and every possession icing this game with that play. The greatest play call you can get as a quarterback, Chris, is when the offensive coordinator says victory formation. And that's what they'll line up in. There's still two and a half to play. 30 seconds. Rutgers will burn a quick timeout, but for Shiano, it's going to be a fifth consecutive bowl victory, apparently, barring a, a crazy turnaround in the last 239. And that's important for this Rutgers team. You know, believe it or not, at the start of the season, they make the bowl game one of their goals, not just to get there, but to win the bowl game. You take a look on their boards, it'll say bowl champions. They look at this as a championship game. They understand the momentum that gets carried into the offseason. But what a way to go out for all the seniors on Rutgers playing in their final game here at Yankee Stadium in a great venue against a very worthy opponent, an excellent Iowa State team. Come away with the win. It's pretty special. Meanwhile, they're set to kick off Mississippi State and Wake Forest, the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl, ACC versus SEC. You have a, you have a take on that one, the conventional wisdom being that the superior physical specimens on the Mississippi yeah, State Tanner side. Price, be careful. Tanner Price, these guys can throw the football going around against a little bit against the wake, okay. wake Forest. I'm just saying, it's not going to be a runaway, I think, like most people think. Right. You can see that the Bulldogs will get the ball to begin the game in Nashville. We'll get you there momentarily. And they're going to get good field position out of it as the kickoff right. return goes well take that, into Wake Forest. Can I take that back and I say Mississippi State in a wash? <laughs> this will be a... Very satisfying result for the Scarlet Knights as they get to, to nine wins. Denied an opportunity in the final game to get a piece of the Big East title when they thought they had a chance to get into a BCS Bowl game. Instead, they stay close to home, but something to build on for next season. You know, and looking across the sidelines of Paul Rhodes and Iowa State forecasting for next year as well, they have a lot to look forward to. They're returning a lot to this football team. When you look at the quarterback race they're going to have between Barnett and between Steel Jants, they return their top three running backs, three of their top four wide receivers, their top four tacklers. There's some good players coming back on Iowa State side of the football as well, heading into the Big 12 Conference play next season. This will sting because I ask Rhodes, you know, obviously you want to win a bowl game, but there's a big difference between six and seven and seven and six. As Dodd, by the way, almost bobbles the, the snap before he hands it off to Burton for a loss. You know, it's technically a losing season, even though, as you pointed out, they really were favored in only two games well, this year. When you consider the hurdles they had to climb this season with switching a quarterback midway through the year, losing your starting tailback, and Chantrell Johnson to a neck injury against Texas, the expectations, as you mentioned, coming into this year, to come away with a 6-6 six and six record, beat two ranked opponents like they did, I think it was a tremendous year. I think Paul Rhodes, one of the bright coaches in all of college football, bright spot. Congratulations to Iowa State for locking him up because they only have better things to look forward to now in the horizon with him at charge. Indeed, well said. If you want to watch the presentation of the New Era Pinstripe Bowl trophy presentation, you can watch that on ESPN3 as soon as we conclude our game. We're 22 seconds away from kicking it to Nashville, Mississippi State. And Wake Forest, and here comes the cold bath for Coach Ciano. They have yet to really fully orchestrate this. Could be a lot colder here in late December, close to New Year's. We thought that would be literally an ice bath. <laughs> a balmy, unseasonably be warm day in New York, and a warm feeling for the guys. They'll ride across the George Washington Bridge and back to their campus 50 oh. miles away. 
after win number nine. And again, Jamison was the outstanding performer. He'll finish with 131 yards rushing and a couple touchdowns. Three takeaways for Shiano's defense, three sacks, eight. Tackles for loss, and they also blocked a field goal. Yeah, really complete win. I mean, really couldn't have been more complete than this for Rutgers. Leave a very good taste in their mouth. Looking forward to what they hope is a very promising next season. Falling behind 6 0, and then 27 unanswered points. Had to make the stand late to fight off the Iowa State rally. And this is just Dodd rolling out. Wants to stay in bounds and takes a shot inside the 25. Gets the first down, and that should be the final play of this new era pinstripe bowl. First loss of the bowl season for the Big 12 Conference. And here comes the bath. Every time I see this, I think back to LSU Alabama November 5th when Les Miles got dunked. It's cold. That's cold. That's cold. You know what, Shiana told me as you get older as a coach, the, the, the losses hurt as much and the winds maybe don't feel as sweet but you can tell by the smile that he's enjoying this one Jesse and so he should tremendous win tremendous end of the season for Greg Schiano he's brought this Rutgers football program to new heights let's see if they can take the next step next season to be for the championship for Tom and Jesse our crew in the Bronx I'm Chris Bala thanks for watching 27 13 is the final of Franklin American Morgan Music City Bowl is coming up next